Hawaii in the final game of this college football weekend. Coming up, a Western Athletic Conference shootout between San Jose State and Hawaii. Spartan quarterback Dale Rogers triggers a Jekyll and Hyde offense that racked up 70 points against Rice, but was kept out of the end zone the final week by the Washington Huskies. While the banged up Warriors will count on multi-threat Chad Owens to find a way to the end zone in front of a hometown homecoming crowd. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Leahy along with Doug Violetti. When you talk about San Jose State, you were talking about a team that has multi-personalities. First of all, against Rice, they're down 34 to seven at halftime. They reach critical mass in the second half. They score 10 touchdowns. They win that game 70 to 63. And then against Washington, only a week later, they don't score any touchdowns. They have only two field goals and 133 total yards. Then they lose to SMU, a team that had lost 15 times previous to that matchup. So they have their troubles. You don't know when that potential is going to show up for San Jose State or even if it will show up. And as far as Hawaii is concerned, they have their uncertainties too. I agree, Jim. It's midway through the season and Hawaii finds itself in a must-win situation. With seven games left, Hawaii needs to win five to become bowl eligible. And tonight's game on paper seems like one of the easier ones. Offensively, there aren't many questions about Hawaii. They will pass the ball a lot. And Timmy Chang is well on his way to breaking the all-time passing record. Defensively, however, there are question marks everywhere you look. They have been hit hard by the injury bug. Uh, there, you're going to see players tonight that you haven't seen play so far this season because of those injuries. And I don't know whether they're going to run a 4-3 defense, a 3-4 defense, or a nickel defense. So the question marks are on defense. Uh, it will be the team that shores it up and is there at the end. San Jose State against Hawaii. Stay tuned, everybody, from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. flows speed ride shotgun on your left on your left and the rubber burns nice work gentlemen espn russell racing schools hands-on racing packages will get you up and running for the ride of your life or to battle for pole position in your own car sign up for the performance driving tour at a track near you for more info call 800-733-0345 or race on over to espnrussellracing.com Welcome back to Aloha Stadium, everybody. Tonight's game between San Jose State and the University of Hawaii. Both teams two and three on the season. Hawaii is two and two in the WAC, and San Jose State one and one in the Western Athletic Conference. Working with us on the sideline tonight is Mina Sugimoto. Let's go down to the sidelines. Mina. 
Well, Jim, as you know, each week we present a Geico quote of the game, and usually it's a tidbit from a, a head coach, I should say, about the perceived strengths of this week's opponent. Well, this week's Geico quote of the game comes from San Jose State Sports Information Director Lawrence Fan. It's about last year's matchup between these two teams, a game in which he says has was like a game that lasted 59 minutes and 59 seconds. As you may recall, 20 seconds left in the game, and Hawaii had a three-point lead. San Jose State had the ball, but no timeouts remaining. Here's how those final 20 ticks played out. Martin. Single setback again. 20 seconds left. Second down. Goal to go. In motion is Pinky. Rizloff to throw. Lays it off. With it is Anderson. To the five. Anderson close to the goal line. He didn't get in. 10 seconds left. They're trying desperately to line up. Four seconds. Three seconds. The ball is snapped. And Hawaii may have won this game, or had they called the timeout. Some confusion. Simcoe is saying, now let's have cool heads here. The game is over. The game is over. The game is over. What a gift for Hawaii. And upon further and much later review, the Western Athletic Conference, of course, had determined that the referees in that game, well, they kind of messed up and that the Spartans should have had one more play that game, a play that never happened. So in the books, it's a Hawaii victory, a victory the Spartans hope to avenge tonight. Jim? Okay, thanks, Minna. We talked to some of the Spartan traveling party, and they were saying that they're really concerned with what has been going on this year instead of uh, going back to last year on that frustration. But there certainly was much frustration on the San Jose side. And that referee crew, by the way, has never been allowed to reform again. And some have gone on to other conferences. What a game that was. But tonight is, is two teams that are trying to find a consistent winning identity, and they have not been able to do so. Hawaii got torched last week at UTEP. San Jose State had the week off. So they travel across the Pacific to match up with Hawaii tonight. And as you heard Doug Violetti say, Hawaii has seven games left on the season. They must win five of them to become bowl eligible. And they finish the season with Big Ten foes Northwestern and Michigan State. Hawaii winning the toss, and they have elected to receive they are wearing their black uniforms for the first time this year many think it's because of homecoming in reality the black uniforms arrived this week and so this is the first opportunity that they've had to wear their all blacks jason ferguson number 21 for hawaii 5 5 157 pound freshman out of los angeles and fairfax high school will receive jeff carr will kick off for san jose state Ferguson near the sideline, takes it three yards deep. He's going to return it. Ferguson still on his feet at the 25 and is finally ankle tackled there, and we have a penalty flag. Tonight's starting lineups are sponsored by Enjoy Snacks. It's time to enjoy life. This is the way that Hawaii will line up. Tala Isera, Samson Satele, Derek Fa'avi, Uriah Moino, and Brandon Eaton in that offensive line. Tim Chang is the quarterback. The receivers, Brinton Comine, on the Chad return. Owens. Personal foul, face mask on the kicking team, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. So you see the face mask, personal foul. They'll move that up. Other receivers, Se'e Pomele. He will be uh, one of the uh, receivers involved tonight. And also Jason Rivers. Tim Chang will start 1,659 yards this season. He is 559 yards short of the all time pass yardage record. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. Long for Rivers. Too long. Rivers angled back toward the middle, and the pass was thrown deeper near the sideline, near the numbers, covering on the play, Gerald Harding. Defense 
for San Jose State. Tony Ficklin, Kenji Green, Lanal Ransom, and Sean McNamara in that defensive line. Ezekiel Staples, who leads the WAC in tackles, and Jamonte Cox are the linebackers. And then five defensive backs, George Goodness, Nunez, Powell, and Hardy. Second down and 10 from the 41. Five-man pattern, the throw. That is complete, and with it is Owens. So Chad Owens making his first reception of this game. Owens leads the WAC in receptions per game with 8.6 and leads the WAC in reception yards per game with 95 yards. And that was his 44th catch of this season. It will bring up third down and two. Ball just short of the 49-yard line. Third and two. Empty backfield. Five receivers again. Well, that is complete. And that is complete to Gerald Welch. And that's enough for the first down. So it seems that Hawaii coming out with a new formation, empty backfield, five receivers, and they are flooding the defense. Yeah, and then uh, San Jose is just rushing four guys because they can't afford to blitz anybody with five receivers. they got to cover them all. So it's, uh, it's effective so far. It's nice to see Gerald Welch out there starting uh, and a nice catch there. First down, Hawaii operating very quickly. First and 10 from the 49-yard line of San Jose State. Tim Chang with that injured left shoulder, his non-throwing shoulder, steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle. That's intercepted. Intercepted on the 21-yard line by Bobby Goodenes. And Goodenes, that's his second interception of the year. And for Tim Chang, that is his second interception. It was intended for Se'e Pumeli. And Pumele got tripped up, fell down, and that opened it up for Goodness to make the interception. Okay, number seven, Pumele is going to run his route, and he slips, falls down right there. The ball is in the air. Timmy Chang had already let it go, expecting Pumele to get to that area. It goes past Pumele right into the arms of Goodness, who was in deep coverage that time. Dale Rogers is the quarterback. Comes in with 713 yards and seven touchdowns, three interceptions. Back to pass on first down. He has time, he'll run with room, the 25, and he slides forward to the 28-yard line. Gain on the play of about six. We'll see where they put the ball. The starters for San Jose State in that offensive line, they have William Obang, Chad Lorette, Matt Kanfu, Amadeo Novella, and Osmar Staples. Dale Rogers is the quarterback. Brian Wagey, one of the receivers, Skillern Jones, Broussard, an excellent player, and Tyson Thompson. Thompson is the main rusher. Second down, three and a half. Pitch to Thompson, trying to get outside. He does, first down and more. Down the sidelines and out of bounds. First down for San Jose State on the first carry by Thompson. Thompson came in, that was his 78th carry. And he goes over 450 yards, 10-yard gain. He has 454 for the season. For Hawaii defensively, Mel Purcell, Louis Funga, Matt Funga, and Kila Kamakaviva Ole on that defensive line. Kapanui, Ho'ohuli, and Moy are the linebackers. Elamimi and Peters, Monte, and Kenny Patton not getting the start again tonight. He is not in there. Ball is given again to Thompson, weaves his way into the Hawaii secondary and gets all the way out to the 48, and that's very close to the first down. Chad Kapanui, one of the linebackers, made the stop. Starting in place of Patton is Ray Bass, number 12. Ray Bass on the corner, making his first start for Hawaii. And coming in is Lance Martin into the backfield. Martin will now become the running back, triple wide receiver to the left, second down and one. Martin replacing Thompson. Rogers, the quarterback for San Jose State. Second and one. Martin may have the first down. Lance Martin, in last year's game, seven carries, 43 yards. That was at San Jose. They are very close to the first down. No measurement. And they are short. Third down and in inches. Huge offensive line for San Jose State. They average 6'4", 304 pounds. Martin remains as the single setback. Hawaii jumping around on defense. Four-man front quarterback sneak. It is Rodgers, and he gets the first down and more. Crosses into Hawaii territory to the 48-yard line. 
Chuck. So Hawaii moving the ball, and all of a sudden, Timmy Chang gives up his second interception of the year, and now San Jose comes back. And San Jose, with the kind of offense that you really don't know what they're going to do, they are starting to move the ball. Exactly, Jim. Already you've seen them mix it up. They've run, they've passed, the quarterback runs, they run the option. It's a hard def uh, offense to defend against. Skillern and Broussard are the wide receivers. Back to pass. Rodgers throws long. That is incomplete. Threw it to a spot at about the 20-yard line, and there was no one there. Incomplete. Well, he's hurried a little bit. Good pass rush by uh, number 90, Akban. Got in there and got right in his face right before he threw the ball. So I think it looked like he had to throw the ball a little earlier than he expected to or wanted to. Second down and 10 from the 49-yard line for San Jose State. No score, just underway. First quarter, first exchange of the ball, first turnover of the game moments ago. 11.34 left the play. Skillern joining the triple wide receivers, flanked to the far side. Rodgers throws. That's batted down by Akpan. Intended for Skillern. Akban looming up. 6'6, 274, the junior out of Nigeria. And, and that's he's one of those players that seems to get better every week. Well, there's an interesting match matchup on that side. You've got Akban going against number 79, William Obeng, who's 6'6, 307. So two big, tall guys going against each other. And uh, Akban doing a good job at time, jumping up in the air, getting his big hands up and swatting the ball down. Broussard off to the far side, along with James Jones. Skillern to the near side. Thompson is the single setback. Back to pass again is Rodgers. In trouble, steps away, throws, and coming back is Skillern, and Skillern makes the reception on the Hawaii 38-yard line. That's enough for a first down, and San Jose State moving the ball. Oh, excellent catch. And good ad-libbing by the quarterback, Dale Rogers, who at 6'3", 239 pounds, is the biggest quarterback in the Western Athletic Conference. And watch him roll out here. He gets some pressure by Akban, gets out of the pocket, and then sides arm. It's a terrific throw by Rogers and a nice catch by Skilling. 11-yard game, first down for San Jose State. Four wide receivers. Ferguson gets the handoff into the secondary. Slips one tackle, but not another. Excellent job by Tanuvasa Moy, the linebacker. Moy coming up and making the stop. Right. Also, also uh, helping out was uh, Louis Funga. Right, and that was a really good job by Moy because uh, Ferguson turned that play backside. He went play side to the left. Nothing was there. He turned it backside, and Moy uh, keeping his uh, position, staying where he's supposed to be, makes the tackle. Second down and seven. The ball at the 36. Short drop. Sideline pattern incomplete off the hands of Skiller. Watching Skiller was Elamimian. Elamimian telling the official that uh, Skiller was pushing off, grabbing the face mask, but no call. That'll bring up third down and seven. And, and that's another uh, matchup I'd like to watch because Elamimian had a tight hamstring last week. Pull uh, they kind of stretched it a little, so it'd be interesting to see if San Jose tests him earlier in this game, They'll try to get him to uh, maybe tweak that hamstring or stretch it out, do something to it. And San Jose State calls a timeout. 10:27 left to play here in the first quarter. Hawaii nothing. San Jose State. When we come back, we'll have third down on the Hawaii 36-yard line. Welcome to the 2004 Old Spice Red Zone Body Wash Presidential Election. During this year's exciting college football season, Old Spice introduced its newest innovation for men, Red Zone Body Wash. And Stephanie's standing by to give you a tour of the campaign's sights, sounds, and smells. Jeremy, this Red Zone Body Wash campaign hit big time at college football tailgates around the country. 51 candidates from 17 colleges hit the campaign trail with one thing in mind, to become the 2004 Red Zone president. Red, 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 red Zone Body Wash! The future of Red Zone. Red Zone over here! We hold the power of eight-hour scent technology. Red 
candidates felt the power of the eight-hour scent technology and pounded the pulpit in pursuit of a better-smelling America. I would like to thank Old Spice and my yeah. red zone body wash. And remember, a vote for me, Zach, is a vote for a cleaner America. Red zone body wash has been the ultimate running mate. Eight hours later, smelling great, ready to go late. Vote for calling at OldSpice.com. America, vote for your favorite candidate on November 2nd by logging on to OldSpice.com. Most importantly, log on anytime to enter for your chance at winning a presidential VIP Hawaiian getaway. NCAA football is sponsored by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. After all, it's game time. Third down. Seven yards to go as we resume. Triple wide receiver to the left. Thompson is back as single setback out of the shotgun is Dale Rogers big play here Rogers running could be an option Rogers pitches with it is Thompson he said keeps his feet and maybe short of the first down Watson Hooli came over and Watson dealt it him. Well, they line up three receivers to that side. So three, three, three receivers in front of this option blocking. You see them all there getting hands on their defenders. Nice job of the running back dragging the defender with them, getting the extra yards. The ball is advanced to the 29-yard line. It is fourth down. On fourth down conversions, San Jose State is one for six on the season. Ball is pitched to Thompson. Has the first down much more. Inside the 25, inside the 20, inside the 15. Great run by Thompson, and a Hawaii player is down. 15-yard gain on fourth and one. Hawaii looking to the inside. San Jose State went to the outside. Great call. And a terrific block by number 73, the right tackle. Seals the defensive lineman inside. The running back comes outside of him. Another, and a good lead block, block, block by the fullback. And then just strong, powerful running by Tyson Thompson. Apparently, we have a report that it's uh, Tanovasa Moy that's down, but we have not been able to confirm that. Excellent run uh, by Thompson. Yeah, you know, if Tanovasa Moy is down, he's really hurt. <clears throat> it is Tanovasa Moy. Because he had that bruised elbow that he's played through, played with for three weeks, and uh, boy. He's just such a tough kid, and he, he wants to be on the field all the time. He just uh, it's, If he's down, something's wrong. If you look at Thompson, he has three touchdowns, longer than 40 yards, a 42-yard run, 42 run against Morgan State, a 54-yard pass reception against Rice, and a 74-yard run also against Rice in that big explosive day in San Jose. So it appears to be his right leg. And Tanabasa Moy will be helped out. That is not good news for Hawaii. Not at all. Moy, one of the mainstays, Lincoln Manutai, has gone in to take his place. But Moy, really a catalyst in that defense. In fact, he leads the team in tackles with 41, 23 of them solo. And he has three tackles for loss. And he has been helped off. First down, and the ball just inside the 15 for San Jose State. Ferguson, rather, excuse me, Martin. Martin to the 10. So Lance Martin, they have been revolving three backs in the early going. And Thompson will come back into the game for Martin. We've also seen Ferguson in there. Matt Funga made the tackle for Hawaii. So it is second down. Skillern to the far side. And to the near side is Broussard. And Ferguson now goes in as a single setback. This is Ferguson, five foot five to the five yard line. And he keeps his legs going inside the five. Finally runs out of room. They put it down on the four. That should be a first down. He's yeah. very close. You know, at five foot five, Ferguson is is one of the smallest players in, in the NCAA. So he gets behind his blockers, and it's hard for the defense to locate him. And he can squeeze through holes that not many running backs can squeeze through. Ferguson last year against Hawaii, five carries, 
for minus 11 yards, but in 2002, he had eight carries for 84 yards. So he is a very experienced running back. Ferguson remains in. They come out with the offset at eye, the power eye. Ferguson to the two, and he's piled up by the black shirts. So another variation on the theme by San Diego State, Watson Hooli. Made first contact. Well, and that'll bring up second down and goal to go. Lamont Robinson, a fullback into the game for San Jose State. You can see Robinson and uh, James Callier also helping out with the blocking. 16th play of this drive for San Jose State. Second down, goal to go on the two. And the ball is given to Callier, and he doesn't get in. Excellent play by Matt Manuma was there. Manuma, number nine, coming up. And also Ho'ohuli. Well, Collier gets this ball. It looks like he has some space, but Manuma, unblocked, comes up, comes up from his safety position, ducks his head and just drives it into the running back and puts him down. San Jose State with a double tight end. Thompson is the single setback. Skillard. Skiller and Broussard are the wide receivers. Big play. Looking into the end zone. Rodgers throws. Touchdown. Rodgers just drilled it to Skiller. That's his third touchdown of the season. And for Rodgers, as far as uh, passing is concerned, that's his eighth touchdown. Well, Skiller came into the season as the most experienced receiver that San Jose had. Ray Bass was on tight coverage on Skiller, and he was there. He just slipped right at the end and uh, wasn't able to make the play. So coming into Tribe, the point after is Jeff Carr. Excellent drive by San Jose State. Bo Pierce will do the holding. Ball is placed. It is kicked. And it is good. 7-19 left to play in the first quarter. San Jose State strikes first. Long, consistent drive. They lead 7 to nothing. Just the governor. Ah, this is your job. All right. Cheap seats. <laughs> 10 Eastern every Thursday night for a new look at the old games. Kind of looks like a peacock that has to go to the bathroom. So I'm going with the Broncos. Meanwhile, in St. Louis. Watch the transitions, boys. So I'm going with the Broncos. Speaking of ornery animals, the Rams take on the Jews. Where there's a giant battle going on a quarterback. Uh -huh. My work here is done. Speaking of work being done, there is a lot of... From the top! Sunday NFL Countdown, the hardest working pregame show in football. Sundays at 11 on ESPN, presented by Old Spice. Back down here on the sidelines, and as you mentioned, Jim, Moy was gingerly walking off the field. In fact, he had to get some help from the trainers. As he came to the sidelines, we overheard them talking about a hamstring pull. He said that as he was on the field, he heard something pop, and so there, that, there was a concern there. He came over to the bench, and the trainers worked on him stretching that leg. Right now, he's going up and down the sidelines, trying to work that out, but he is telling the trainers that he's okay and he wants to go back into the game. Jim, Doug? Thanks, Minna. Tanobasa Moore, leading tackler on the team. 7-0, San Jose State, Jeff Carr kicking off, kicks off deep, and Ferguson will not return it. Hawaii will start from the 20-yard line. So a very impressive drive for San Jose State after they have uh, intercepted the pass and have turned that turnover into seven points. On the drive, 
as they went. 78 yards in 17 plays. They had 12 rushes for 64 yards and five passes for 14 yards. So a very good, a very good way of calling plays. A lot of variations on the theme. First down for Hawaii at their own 20 yard line. Ball is given to Brewster trying to get outside. Turns the corner, gets to the 24 in the white shirts. Finally stop his progress. Larnell Ransom, number 54. He's from Compton, California. Went to Bourbon Day High School, making the tackle for San Jose State. Brewster on that run, that's his 35th rush. He came in with just over 300 yards and four touchdowns rushing. Brewster, the transfer from the University of Tennessee. Second down for Hawaii. Second down and a long six. Given to Brewster again, turns the corner, first down. Out of bounds he goes, but we have a penalty fly. Could be a hold on Hawaii, and it is. Dan Romeo is the a referee for tonight. We'll be hearing him as you look oh. at June Jones. Holding offense, number 69. Denyard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Well, I think what happened there was Tony Ficklin, number 49, rushing from his defensive end position from the opposite side of the field, from the from the side that the player was going away from. And when he ran past Moino, Moino reached out and, and grabbed onto the, his jersey. So. And that is holding. That is holding. So the ball is put back at the 16-yard line. It is second down. And 14 yards to go for the first down as you look at Tim Chan. Wes Kalikichipi is coming as the running back. Chang to throw and whistles low. Usually when that happens, it is either delay of game or false start. Dead ball, false start, offense number 84, five-yard penalty, still second down. So it will be second down and 19 yards to go in Hawaii not helping themselves with these penalties. They trail in this game seven to nothing. Yeah, and that was on Jason Rivers. Now he's at the wide out position looking in and he might have a hard time hearing the cadence from the quarterback. He's got to watch the ball. When the ball moves, he moves. Second down and 19. They have it on the 11. Four wides for Hawaii. Ball is given up the middle, and with it is Kali Kipi, and he is upended. Excellent tackle. Knocking the legs out to, from under him is Ezekiel Staples. Staples leads the whack with 10.4 tackles per game. He has uh, 52 total tackles, 24 of them solo. And now he has 25 solo tackles. Well, he came from his linebacker position. Nobody blocked him. He came right up at number 26, Ezekiel Staples. Staples. And now last year, Jim, this guy was a running back. This year at linebacker, he's he, like you said, he's leading them in tackles. Third down and 15 for Hawaii. And the ball just over the 15-yard line. Tim Chang steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle. That is complete to Komine. And Komine really takes a lick. So Kamine with his 21st reception. That's a first down. Hawaii makes up the stagger on those penalties. Josh Powell credited with the hit. We'll take another look here. And it was uh, Powell. Oh, really lowered the boom on Kamine, but Kamine holding on. He goes to the sidelines, crowd reacting to the stadium replay. First down from the 38-yard line. Ball is thrown high. That was intended on the far side for Se'e Komele. The ball floated. Second down and 10 for Hawaii. 5-17 left to play here in the first quarter. 7 to nothing in favor of San Jose State. Tim Chang started this game 559 yards short of the all-time passing record. 
Tang with 38 yards now. He has uh, been able to advance it. The ball is given to Brewster. And Brewster able to wedge into that secondary for a good game. That'll bring up third down. Okay, you can see Samson Satella there. He's pulling from his left guard position, and he reads the defensive end. And, and, and he, when he makes that block on a defensive end, Fenderson then reads his block, or Brewster, I'm sorry, reads his block, and then make, uh, runs right up the hole. Third down and four. In motion is Paul Milley. Chang whistles blow again. Chang throws an interception, but the whistles blew far ahead of what happened before the ball play. was snapped delay of game offense boy that that really hurts at this point in the season a late call for delay of game so instead of third and four it's going to be third down and nine 432 left to play here in quarter number one So Hawaii back to the attack. Rivers to the near side along with Owens. Komine is, is back into the game. He is wide to the far side. Chang throwing. That is complete. Now he was hit on that play. Komine again. Komine very close to the first down. The ball is advanced to the 48-yard line of Hawaii. And it, as soon as he caught that ball, he was hit. Second catch in a row, he catches, as soon as he touches the ball, he gets hit. Uh, that one wasn't as bad as the previous hit he took, but uh, it, it looked like even he got hit before he caught the ball. That might have been a penalty. June Jones is out, saying either interference or it was not a good spot. Palms upwards, as you can see. And I think he's pointing toward the spot. And they will pull the chains. It will be close. That is very close. They may have bent the pole a little bit, huh? <laughs> First down by an inch. <laughs> That's a bent pole. <laughs> oh. They, 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 they broke that out for the homecoming game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that pole came from, but. It is a first down on the 48-yard line for Hawaii. They trail here in the first quarter, if you just joined us, the final college football game of this football Saturday. Hawaii trailing 7 to nothing to San Jose State. Fresh set of downs now for Tim Chang. Chang looking left, checks off. Dancing, now throws. That is complete. Coming back to get it is Owens. And Owens is swallowed up as he gets inside the 45-yard line to the 44. Mm. Credit the offensive line. Nice patience by Timmy Chang going through his progression, and he's able to go through the progression, Jim, because, like you said, the offensive line did a terrific job of blocking the defensive line of San Jose State. San Jose State has got some good athletes on that side of the ball, but they're just not very big. They're, they're lean and quick. Hawaii's offensive line did a terrific job of staying with it. There you see Mike Cavanaugh, the offensive line coach. Remember, this line operates without a tight end. Second down and two. Kali'i Kiki. First down inside the 40 to the 39. Well, we just finished talking about the offensive line. I'm going to talk about him again. Specifically, number 64, Sapson Satele pulls again from his left left guard spot here you see him right here he's going to pull and he's going to read the defensive end he turns up field and just buries him takes him downfield goes around the corner and then helps push the pile that's the kind of stuff that makes Satelli a special player Ezekiel Staples finally diagnosing the play but Hawaii another first down on the 39 yard line of San Jose State 243 left to play in the first quarter Tim Chang hands the ball to Brewster with a blocker out in front of him. Brewster wiggles to the 36, and then he gets blasted toward the sideline. Samson Satelli trying to lead him around uh, the end that time for Hawaii. Yeah, they went to the same exact place that Satelli did a nice job of blocking just the defense 
there. The defense defended it better than it did previously. You might, you know, Hawaii might want to maybe pull the other guard, Moino, around the other side, mix it up. What is amazing about statistics is that San Jose State comes into this game number one against the pass in the Western Athletic Conference, but they are last. They are tenth against the run. Second down, seven and a half. The ball has been advanced to the 37-yard line of San Jose State. Tim Chang looking left now throws. That is complete to Pomelli. Pomelli gets the hit from Gerald Hardy. I'll tell you one thing about the defensive secondary of San Jose State. They are here to pop you. Okay, we're only in the first quarter and already two big hits by the secondary. That one by cornerback Gerald Hardy earlier, number 33, Josh Powell, made a huge hit on Pomini. So they're out there and they're laying the hat down tonight. Hawaii in third down conversions, 36%. They are 24 for 66. And they have a third down and two right here on the 31 yard line of San Jose State. Tim Chang throws. It is complete on the sidelines, the 10, and bounced out of bounds. That's Komine. Nobody picked him up. That was just a confusion on the defensive side because Tristan George, who was out there at cornerback on the defense, broke in. He came inside to defend the slot. And you see, nobody's there to, to uh, get Komine except for the safety, Powell. Powell saved the touchdown. So another first down, and the ball now deep into the red zone, just outside the six yard line. Flamini is flanked to the far side, and to the near side is Rivers. Pomelli and Owens in the slot. Owens in, in the formation, and the ball is given to Brewster. And Brewster stumbles inside the five-yard line, very close to the goal line. And if it looks like you see this play a lot, it's because Hawaii, it's one of Hawaii's two running plays, and they, they pull the, the left guard against Samson Satelli, and that time, the defensive end came upfield. And uh, Satelli pushed him out. And uh, so Brewster had to break it behind him up into the line of scrimmage. You see of the 18 opportunities, 17 successes for the opponent. Second down, goal to go. The ball at the two-yard line. Brewster, the single setback along with Tim Chang. Four wide receivers. Chang to Brewster. Brewster trying to get outside. Gets into the end zone, but we have a penalty fly. Again, Satelli, the pulling guard, got to where he needed to be. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, perhaps that's why he got there so quickly. Right, right, and I was watching that play, and it's one thing Satelli has to work on. I could tell that he was going to pull on that play by the way he was sitting in his stance, and the defenders could tell, too. So he took a cheat step before the ball was snapped, and the ref caught it. Second down, goal to go. Hawaii really has been hindered and has at least delayed their progress enough to where it has become a problem on this drive. It has become a problem because they have not scored yet. It is now second down and goal to go from the seven yard line. Back to pass is Chang. There may be another delay of game. No, no, no. I'm sorry. End of quarter. End of the quarter. I, Before the I ball stand was corrected. Snapped. That was the end. First quarter the first comes to an quarter. end. San Jose State leads seven to nothing. Ooh, look. Dear Prilosec OTC guys, one pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. How's that work? Sign the frequent heartburn guy next to you. Whoa. Here's how. It's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of those acid-producing pumps in your stomach. That's why it's the only OTC that can work for 24 hours with one pill a day. Awesome. Prilosec OTC, one, one pill a day, 24, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Uh, my name's Glenn Jacobs, and I've been a PA here at Sports Center for about three months, and it's been really great. You've embarrassed me on national TV. I mean, I work long hours, sure, but I get a lot of exercise. I mean, it's really cool when one of those guys reads something I've written on the air. Nice try, Sparky. Nice try. Maybe next time. Four months ago, I was writing a paper about my idol, Craig Kilborn. Gary? Uh, Glenn? Okay. Here I am getting career advice from him. Two words for you. Pizza delivery. I... It's incredible. You have but one question. 
This hot dog is from the LSU homecoming game. What's in it? It is what it is, through and through. So, the hot dog is made a hot dog? Your wisdom is surpassed only by your ignorance. <laughs> ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10.30 on ESPN. Time now for this uh, Budweiser fact. Herculean at home, woeful on the road. You see both teams, and Hawaii home scoring average, and the road scoring average, and the difference. Well, that home scoring average for San Jose State, was that game against Rice at home? That was at that home. That certainly would skew the number. Yeah, that, that's true. Your one stop shop for anything related to UH athletics is HawaiiAthletics.com. You can visit the UH website for information about Hawaii teams and fan activities, as well as to purchase tickets and merchandise. That's HawaiiAthletics.com. A second down and goal to go from the seven yard line. Ball is given on a sweep again to Brewster, the five, touchdown! Hawaii kept hammering away at that goal line. Brewster scores. And that's his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. It is now seven to six. Samson Satelli, third time is the charm. He comes. Pulling around, you see him there, number 64, and the able to block outside and escort Brewster into the end zone. Now Ayat will come in and try the point after. Ayat is not 100%. As far as point afters are concerned, he is six for eight, trying to tie the game here. Ball is placed, kick is up, and it is good. So we are even. Just into the second quarter, tied at seven. You were drinking gungy water, trying to blow my head. Love a Billy woman. Stop and lay my money down. Well, if you don't stop it, babe, you find yourself sleeping in the ground. Monday Night Football, and... Whoa, the perfect meal. Hot, fresh pizza and great-tasting buffalo wings. Thanks, man. Domino's Pizza congratulates ABC's Monday Night Football on its 35th anniversary. Monday Night Football and Domino's. It's all you need. Guys, guys, come on. Touchdown, Irish! ABC Sports Saturday, the home of college football. You know, we at ESPN were always complaining about how there weren't any good places for sports fans to eat. So we opened ESPN Zone. Non-stop sports coverage. Tons of cool games. And really terrific food. But really, ESPN Zone's a place where everybody, even Grandma, can let loose. Booyah! Have fun. Justin Ayad will kick off for Hawaii. John Brassard, number 81, and Tristan George, number four, deep for San Jose State. A 7 7 tie just into the second quarter on this homecoming night in Honolulu. Ayad kicks off. That will be returned. It will go to George. George is grabbed at the 20. 
And they stack them up until the whistle blows. So the special teams performing there for Hawaii. Hawaii went 14, or rather went 80 yards in 14 plays. Seven minutes and 24 seconds of elapsed time. That's the longest drive of the year and the most elapsed time of the year. Brewster with a seven yard run. I ought to tie it with the point after. So here comes San Jose State. Very impressive on their first drive. Lamar Ferguson is the single setback. Triple wide receiver to the left. Quick pass. That is complete to Bassard, and he's dangerous. 30. And knocked out of bounds by Elamimian. As he gets up over the 34 yard line, 13 yard gain and a first down. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the loyalty award. They'll donate $100 toward the Central Pacific Bank endowed scholarship fund for every touchdown that Hawaii scores. Central Pacific Bank fiercely loyal banking. First down for San Jose State on the following that 13 yard game by Broussard. Ball is given to Ferguson looking for running room finds it. He is at the 40 spinning away to the 43. Excellent run by Ferguson. Ferguson is the kind of runner that if you stop him early he may have trouble the whole game. But if you allow him success he gets more confident more confident and he could really be a pest. The right tackle there, number 73, Omar Staples. When he reached blockers, he reached blocks so far out, and he's so big. When uh, Ferguson breaks inside of him, there's a huge hole. Second down and two, an eight-yard gain by Ferguson. He remains normally he, uh, has been replaced by Thompson. This is Thompson. Thompson trying for the first down. He gains only one of the two yards needed. So that'll bring up third down and one yard to go. Matt Funga there to finally halt his progress. Third down and one. So here comes San Jose State. San Jose State comes out in the I formation, number 42, James T. Callier and Tyson Thompson. Callier is the fullback, Thompson is the tailback. Third and one. Thompson. First down, spins to midfield. What June Jones had said earlier in the week in looking at tape of San Jose State, he said that they have the running backs, that they can take it and just run it straight ahead. And if they're successful, they'll do that all night. That's right. Well, it's a huge offensive line, and they keep doing that. They are going to wear down this Hawaii defense very quickly. Back to pass is Rogers throws that is complete with it is Broussard and that's a 15 yard gain from midfield to the 35 yard line of Hawaii. So San Jose State really starting to explore that Hawaii defense now. Yeah, well, we talked earlier about how we're going to see players on the field defensively for Hawaii that we haven't seen a lot of this season. Number 35 Cal Monte is in there as a safety. He's a freshman. Lincoln Manutai is in there as, as linebacker. So guys that haven't played a lot this year are in there expected to play against this very complex offense and it's hard. Hawaii trying to find the right combination. First down from the Hawaii 35 yard line. Thompson to the 31. Gain of four. So they are relentless. Mel Purcell comes over to make the stop. Purcell in the game, he is 6'4", 266 from Pongo Pongo in American Samoa. He leads in tackles for loss, 9.5 coming in uh, to this game. And he is right up among the leaders in the Western Athletic Conference. Second down and six for San Jose State. Broussard is flanked to the far side. Thompson remains a single setback. Casey Miranda also in as a wide receiver for San Jose State. Rogers rolling, but a whistle blows, and we may have a false start. Before the ball was snapped, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. San Jose State now with a penalty that should not occur at this point in the season. 11.49 left to play in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven tie, but San Jose State moving the ball again. Oh, and you're right. Midway through the season, 
the delay of game penalties are hard to take. They're hard to swallow for fans and for coaches. They drive them nuts. Skiller, Miranda, and Brassard are the wide receivers. And they are flanked to the left. Rogers in trouble. Play sack in. Kapanui. First one to him. Chad Kapanui. Kapanui coming off the edge. Hawaii really sending the blitz that time, and it worked. And one of, one of the reasons it worked that time when they send Kapanui off the edge, the defensive end. Kamaka Vivoli drops back into coverage. It's called a zone dog, where they, they blitz the linebacker and drop the defensive end into that zone. So uh, when, the, when the quarterback looks to the hot receiver to throw, the defensive end is there defending him. From the shotgun, third down, long yardage, third and 17. Roger steps up, now throws long. He wants Skillern, and Skillern cannot hold on. Skillern was battling Elamimian up the near sideline. It's a mix up on Hawaii's defense. They blitz two guys in the same hole. It's just good, good for them that they've got Elamimian defending on that pass route because he was in terrific coverage and making a play on the ball. So nice San, defense. San Jose State tries to go the distance they do not on third and long yardage. So Waylon Prather has come in to kick. He is seventh in whack punting. He has punted 20 times for 38.7, and his longest has been 59 yards. Chad Owens is deep standing at the 10, and he'll try to place this. Prather will as close to the goal line as he can. Now it's going to be taken by Owens. Owens out over the 15 to the 18-yard line. I forgot about Owens. He doesn't let anything get by him. 10 34 left to play in the first half. 7 7 tie. Michael, I need someone to work late tonight. I know it's after 5, and I know you probably have plans. By the way, you uh, smell really good. Thank you. Introducing Red Zone Body Wash from Old Spice. With eight-hour scent technology, the great smell lasts all day, whether you want it to or not. Yeah, you do smell good. New Red Zone Body Wash. I think he said, you're... Is nothing secret. The password is crazy. Is anything untouchable? Get that man a sports bra. Is there even one thing the boys won't do for a cheap laugh? <laughs> Park your butt in the cheap seats as they demolish bogus sports pompous jocks and announcers with bad hair. I see dead people. Cheap seats, 10 Eastern every Thursday night for a new look at the old games. Wow, wow, wow. Showtime. On November 5th. From the creators of Finding Nemo. Uh. After 15 years of retirement. He's twice the hero he used to be. Walt Disney Pictures presents a Pixar Animation Studios film. Honey, come to dinner. Maybe just a salad. The Incredibles, rated PG, in theaters November 5th. Check out BigIslandCandies.com to view their latest specials. Big Island Candies, home of the original chocolate dip shortbread cookie. So Hawaii yeah. puts the ball in play at their own 19-yard line. This game tied at seven. Hawaii comes out with a double-wide formation. Brewster is back with Tim Chang. Chang has thrown for 84 yards in this game. He has been intercepted once. Chang now throws. Sideline pattern, leaping catch by Rivers, and he is twirled to the turf. Caught the ball at the 29 and then was forced back by Gerald Hardy. Hardy is the corner for San Jose State. It will give him forward progress nine yards. It will be second down and one. Well, the Rivers came back a little bit to the ball to create some space between him and Gerald Hardy. And Gerald Hardy, now they're both big guys. Rivers is 6 2, so is Gerald Hardy. So two big guys over there uh, tussling and they both go down. Normally, Rivers would probably be able to get away from the corner because of his size but not uh, against Joe Hardy. Hawaii in the all-black uniforms for the first time this season. 
Tim Chang fakes to the right, throws to the left. That ball is intercepted. It went off Owens, and it was intercepted by Hardy. That's Hardy's second interception of the season. And for Tim Chang, that's his third interception for the season. But more important than that for the fortunes of San Jose State, that's Chang's second interception of the game. Well, this is a wide receiver screen, and it goes off of the helmet or the hand of 94, Sean McNamara. And so Owens then loses track of the ball, and it bounces off of him high up in the air. And it's an easy catch for Jarrell Hardy. It just comes on right to him. So a big opportunity now for San Jose State. Thompson comes in as the single setback behind the quarterback Rodgers. Rodgers audibleizing. Tight end is to the right. Quick pass. That is complete to Broussard. Trying to get outside. Turns a corner. 20. And his horse collared out of bounds as he gets close to the first down. Chasing, chasing him out was Kamaka Vibiole on the near side. And San Jose State comes back with a wide receiver screen of their own and a terrific job by Kamaka Vibiole to get all the way over there from his defensive end position. That is a 6'3", 240-pound defensive end running down uh, a receiver. And a terrific job. Second down, about a half yard to go for the first down. The ball is on the 17-yard line of Hawaii. San Jose State threatening again. Here's Thompson trying to get outside. Thompson turns the corner at the 15 to the 10 and out of bounds. Hawaii just unable to get outside before Thompson did. Excellent block by Casey Miranda on the far side for San Jose State. They say two blocks by the guard 77 Novella and 73 Staples. They just reach block. They stretch the defensive line and they give number seven Thompson an option. They give him the decision making power of which hole he's going to take. He turns on the Jets, takes it around the outside. First down, goal to go. The ball at the eight yard line of Hawaii. San Jose State looking end zone. Ball is tossed to the near side to Thompson. Thompson is halted as he gets to the six. So a gain of two yards. Lamar Broadway coming up from his safety position to plug the hole. And what, what made that play work for Hawaii's defense was that the defensive end came upfield. Kamako Vivole came upfield and forced the runner to take it up inside the defensive line where all of Hawaii's defenders are. Instead of giving him the option to go around and upfield, around the corner and upfield like he did on that last play. Lamar Ferguson, 5'5", 151 pounder into the game. Single setback behind Dale Rogers, double tight end. It is Ferguson. Ferguson chased by the Black Church. They run him out of bounds at about the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit that time by Hawaii. Nice, Leading nice. the pursuit, Lincoln Manuta. Nice pursuit, uh, number 22, Broadway. There. He's got to watch it. He's got to watch it because it looks like he shoves the running back out of bounds. And it is a close call. And the ref, you see that right there? See that shove? Yeah. The ref could easily have thrown a flag there down the goal line. You don't need that. 847. I thought he was guilty on that. I was fully expecting a flag to come fluttering through the air. Bassard and Miranda to the far side. Skiller to the near side. Single setback again is Ferguson. Third down goal to go. Into the end zone for Skiller. And right there is Illuminian. Skiller trying to reach over him for the ball. Couldn't do it. And that will bring up fourth down. And for, for Hawaii fans watching El Mimian play, I'm telling you, Jim, we're watching one of the better cornerbacks in Hawaii history play because he's he does a perfect job of running with the receiver. And then when he gets tangled, he turns around and looks at the ball. So the ref cannot throw the flag because he is looking at the ball, making a play on the ball. Jeff Carr, six for nine in field goals, his longest 40. This will be a chip shot. Third, uh, a 23 yarder. Out of the hole to Bo Pierce. Pierce will run it. Pierce pitches back to Carr. Does he get in? He does. What a call by San Jose State. Bo Pierce picked it up and ran. Then he pitched back to Jeff Carr. San Jose State rolls the dice on fourth down and goal to go, and it comes up roses. Well, and I tell you, it looked like the quarterback may have uh, touched the ground with his knee. He stumbled there. Let's watch here. See the quarterback? Oh, oh, he got rid of the ball right before his knee touched the ground. Nice play by the quarterback. And a terrific play call by um, 
Fitzhill and his staff. Carr will now try to be more conventional out of the hole of Pierce. And he drills the point after it is now 14 to 7, San Jose State. San Jose State going deep into the playbook to come with that one. And it worked brilliantly. Dry rinse polymer soap. Pure filter technology. The new Mr. Clean Auto Dry Car Wash. Spot free shine with no need to dry. Guaranteed. You know, we, we've drafted kids right out of high school. We had this one kid. You would not believe the scouting reports. Raves up and down. Can't miss. Once again, the Indians appear to be the team to beat. Emotionally, though, he just wasn't prepared. Jimmy Key is attempting Jimmy to come Key, back. Jimmy Key, what's he like, 45? I could hit him. I mean, it's a different game in here. Jack, do you watch, you watch the game? I mean, didn't, didn't it suck? It sucked. It is with much regret that I announced that I am leaving SportsCenter. Bottom line, he, he just came out too soon. Wallace is going to push it himself. Drives the lane. Takes it strong to the hole. This is shaping up to be a blowout. The number one rated NBA game that IGN calls the most complete hoops game on the market. Now with Next Movement Technology. ESPN NBA 2K5 from ESPN Video Games. It's going to be huge. Rated E for everyone. San Jose State, 14 points off turnovers following the second interception of the night. They go 26 yards in six plays in a minute, six seconds. Carr credited with a six-yard touchdown run following the pitch to him by Pierce. So Carr will kick off. Jason Ferguson deep for Hawaii. Ferguson will return this. Comes up, takes it at the goal line. All the way to the 35-yard line of San Jose State, 66 yards. Absolutely terrific run by Ferguson. You watch him. You're going to see on the replay here. You watch him wait for his blocker at the end there. He's going to break it to his left, go all the way to the sideline. And right here, he's going to slow down and wait for his blocker. You see that? Gets him an extra 20 yards. Nice job by Ferguson. Bank of Hawaii recognizes excellence on the field of play. Tonight we'll be selecting a player from each team as the Bank of Hawaii's most valuable players. First down on the 34-yard line of San Jose State. Wes Khalid Kipi in the backfield along with Tim Chang. Chang looking left, throws, lays it off for Khalid Kipi. Juggles for a moment inside the 30. Bowls over a defender and gets to the 25. Yes. And that was uh, Bobby Godinus, number five, the junior college transfer from Mount San Antonio College. And you saw there, you saw him, he jukes one guy, makes one guy miss. The guy went low, tried to tackle him by his legs, so he makes him miss. The next guy comes high and just gets drilled. Second down and two for the first down. The ball is advanced to the 26-yard line. Khalid Kipi again. Khalid Kipi following Moynoa, breaks out of the hold of a defender, gets inside the 20 to approximately the 17. So as Khalid Kipi has come into the game, and he is a load, six-footer, 270 pounds. Yeah, and that was the running play again. This time they pulled the right guard, Moynoa. And I tell you, with these two guards, Satelli and Moynoa, uh, the two of the better guards in the conference, Moino, especially after dropping 30 or 40 pounds, he's lighter, he's quicker than he was last year, and a good job of of running behind him. First down for Hawaii. They have the ball at the 18 of San Jose State. Brewster has come in replacing Kili'ikipi. Tim Chang looking left, pump fakes. Tim Chang will run. He's at the 15, and down he goes. Boy, half the crowd was excited, and half the crowd went into palpitations well, because of his injury. 
that was part of that ladder half. Don't get hit. You know. I tell you, number 26, Ezekiel Staples came up and just dove at him, went right over his head. He's lucky he slid. Ball has advanced to the 15 yard line. This is where the yards get tough. 14 to 7, San Jose State. Hawaii threatening right away on that 66 yard kickoff return by Jason Ferguson. Lee Keepy back in the game. Chang eludes one man out throws. That is complete inside the 10. To Britton Komine. I think this series hasn't been a good one for number five, Bobby, Bobby Godiness. He gets drilled by Kelly Keepy on the run, and then he blitzes this time. Chang, not the nimblest guy, jukes him out of his shoes, and it looked like he pulled, in, pulled a hamstring on that play. So Hawaii down here before, and we saw at the end of the first quarter and just into the second quarter, Brewster on that sweep, led by either Satelli or led by Moinola. We'll see what if Hawaii goes to the run here. They do. This is Brewster. This time up the middle, inside the five. Brewster still carrying the ball, close to the goal line. Brewster with one touchdown tonight. And that was a terrific read by Brewster. He read the defensive end. He saw him coming in upfield and hard, and he knew that the right guard was going to block him out. So he didn't take any steps outwards. He just went straight up the field, right into the hole. You see in there, Moino comes across his face, and Brewster goes right behind him. So the ball is at the one-yard line for Hawaii. Second down and goal to go. Kali Kipi, the single setback. Now taking the ball from under center is Chang. Kali Kipi. Touchdown. Second touchdown of the season for Kali Kipi rushing. He just would not stop. Uh, you see a nice surge by the offensive line, not really known for their push on the goal line, but a terrific job there. Like I said, the defensive line for San Jose State, not very big. Hawaii does a job, good job of controlling them on the, off, on the uh, goal line. Ayat will try to tie the game. Out of the hold of Milne, it is down, it is kicked, and it is good. 5-0-4 left to play in the first half. We are tied at 14. Prilosec OTC guys. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. How's that work? Sign the frequent heartburn guy next to you. Whoa, here's how. It's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of those acid producing pumps in your stomach. That's why it's the only OTC that can work for 24 hours with one pill a day. Awesome. Prilosec OTC, one, one pill, pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Every Wednesday night, ESPN Classic gets your Irish up. We're gonna get them on a run, we're gonna go, 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 go. Every Wednesday night, ESPN Classic has a golden dome. Here he goes, goodbye. Every Wednesday night, there's only one place to find the fighting Irish. Touchdown, Notre Dame. With the dominant players, the legendary games, and the inside stories, you'll have a better seat than the band. Classic Notre Dame, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, Wednesdays on ESPN Classic. Where would we be without the highlight? Would anyone remember the drive, the catch, or the tuck? Would anyone ever say, did you see that? ESPN has spent 25 years putting the spotlight on the highlight, and it's all right here in ESPN 25 The Book. 25 mind-bending, eye-popping, culture-morphing years of highlights. A tribute to the plays you remember and the people that brought them to you. Plus, for the first time ever, an exclusive DVD with over 30 classic Sports Center commercials. ESPN 25 The Book, available now. Jim Doug, an update on Moy now. As you mentioned, or as we had mentioned, that he had a hamstring injury. We're being told that the diagnosis is, is a strained right hamstring, and he is headed back into the locker room. He is done for this game. That is bad news for Hawaii. Thanks, Mina. We are tied at 14, 504 left. Yeah, you're right. That is bad news. Moy is their heart, one of the hardest working players on that defense. He's just a hustler, gut, gutty guy, gutsy guy. George and Brassard deep again. 
And if this time will go deep in the end zone to Broussard and he will not return it. San Jose State begins at the 20. San Jose State has been able to parlay Hawaii's mistakes into touchdowns, two interceptions. They've turned that around and have scored 14 points. And it's the battle here of the of the little Fergusons. Lamar Ferguson at 5'5", 151, and Jason Ferguson at 5'5", 157. Jason Ferguson of Hawaii, and Lamar Ferguson of San Jose State. Thompson comes in as the single setback. Four wide receivers. Dale Rogers turns, hands the ball to Thompson, and Thompson all the way out from the 20 to the 25 yard line. We have seen in this first half sustained drives on the part of both teams. Yeah, Away with their longest sustained drive for a score. Watson you know, Ho'ohuli with the with the tackle. Well, I'm just going to say with that huge offensive line, they, they need to run more. San Jose State does. And they do. Thompson explodes into the secondary and his ankle tackled as he gets out over the 30 to the 32. That's enough for a first down. Leonard Peters, the safety, finally well, corralled him. Let's talk about this offensive line. 6'3", 290. That's the center. He's the smallest guy, Jim. They get taller and heavier as you move out towards the tackle. With the inexperience on Hawaii's defensive unit, uh, I would just run the ball. Thompson hit behind the line of scrimmage that time. Oh, what a play. Mel Purcell. Mel Purcell, another tackle for loss. That is his 10th of the season. So Purcell excelling. And the ball is halted at the 31-yard line. Second down loss on the play of two. Second down and 12. Skillern to the far side as the wide receiver. Lamar Ferguson has come in as a single setback. Hawaii showing blitz. Rodgers pitches back. This is Ferguson trying to get to the outside and falls down. Leonard Peters was over there making sure he was unable to turn the corner. So that brings up third down. Good pressure that time by Peters. And the, the turf monster just reached up and got him that time because he's going around the corner and it looked like he had some room. He saw the hand come up right out of the turf and grab his ankles. Coming up on three minutes left to play in the first half. 14 14 tie. Third down, long yardage. Rodgers to throw with time. Throws incomplete. It was intended for the tight end Josh Williamson, a walk on at 6'3, 230 out of Yakima, Washington, and Shasta College. And a ball thrown. Wide and high. Landon Kafensis, one of the second generation of Kafensis players for the University of Hawaii out of Richland, Washington, transferred to Hawaii from the University of Arizona, covering on the play. Waylon Prather, 38.7 in average, will punt. Prather's first punt went for 31 yards. High snap. Braithwaite gets it away. Owens watches it go toward the sidelines, and it goes out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Let's go down to Mina Sugimoto. Well, you know, when you're coming off a bye week, as San Jose State has, you know, teams can approach that differently. Sometimes they're completely fired up. Sometimes, you know, they have a little bit of time getting into the groove. Well, San Jose State obviously doing quite well for themselves in the first half and actually the sports information director for the Spartans told me that they were very happy to have had a bye week last week because they had some horrible weather in their neck of the woods in California and they could not even practice on their own practice field. The last time they did, do, did so was Sunday. Okay, man, a 241 left to play in the first half. Hawaii with an, an opportunity and we have a new quarterback in the game. It is Satcher for the first time. Satcher fumbles the ball and they pile up now let's see whether Satcher got the ball back it looks like Brewster jumped on it the question here what is Satcher doing in the game at a crucial point 
at the end of the first half. And is Tim Chang, is Tim Chang injured? That's that, the that's the question. That is the question. I don't remember him getting hit on that last series of Timmy Chang, so uh, we'll see. So Satcher remains in. That was his first play from scrimmage the entire season. Second down and 12. Satcher keeps it. He'll run over midfield to the 47 yard line of San Jose State. Ah, now you begin to see the reason perhaps that Satcher is in the game at this time, at what, this juncture. He's expendable, is that it? No, he can run. <laughs> right, right, terrific job. Now, they'll send Kainoa Akina in and do the same thing. They'll fake the handoff. It's a fake run to a run by the quarterback. It's a nice play, and it worked well that time uh, with Satcher running the ball. Weems into the game, number 89 is flanked to the far side. Satchel remains in first down from the 46 yard line of San Jose State. San Jose State jumping around on defense, and Hawaii has to call a timeout with 119 left to play. Timeout, Hawaii. And they first. were running out of time. Legends follow a road to greatness. Sports Century knows every stop on the way. Because in every life of fame, success, and drive hides a story of humility, demons, and pain. To really know the hero, you've got to reveal the human. The award-winning Sports Century, 8 p.m. weeknights, only on ESPN Classic. Get Classic. Call your cable or satellite provider now. ESPN Full Court College Basketball Pay-Per-View Package. Bring more than 450 of the best games right into your home each week, all season long. To order, call your local cable company at 1-877-ONLY-CABLE, DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Tim Chang has come back into the game, replacing Brandon Satcher. And it is first down from the 46. Chang looking left, checks off, now throws right over the middle. That's complete. Kamina cannot hold on. Another drop. Well, you know, Kamina catches the ball in traffic and gets belted, holds on. That time he's wide open. He beats the defender, number four, and then just drops it. So Hawaii really has been victimized by the drop pass because that certainly was catchable and that ball was placed right there on the money and it, it went through the arms of Komina second down and 10 ball at the 46 yard line for Hawaii a 14 14 tie 115 left to play in the first half. Chang again throws long over the middle he wants Komina he's got a touchdown. Wow, this is a beautiful throw and catch by Chang and Komine. Komine immediately redeeming himself. Perfect throw by Chang. That ball comes down right in his hands in full stride. An amazing throw, an amazing route run by Komine. That's his first touchdown of the season in pass receiving. And for Tim Chang, that's his 93rd career pass for a touchdown. The kick is up by a yacht, and it is good. 107 left. So, right now, if you were writing a headline, 
at, for this part of the game, it would read redemption. Now watch Timmy Chang here. That's a long throw, and it looks like he throws it off of his back foot. He's got so much arm strength, just a terrific quarterback, and that's what makes him special. The, the strength he has to throw on the run and off of his back foot. So Hawaii shockingly throws the 46-yard touchdown pass. And you have to credit Tim Chang because he is not going to go off Komine. He knew that Komine, when he dropped the ball, was open. That ball was there, and then he chooses to go deep and puts it perfectly as it nestles in the hands, as you said, in full stride of uh, Komine. And also, you think about how much Hawaii has run, did run, in that second quarter. Kind of set that play up because the safeties have to come up and make tackles on the run, and that time, he beat the safety deep. Beat Brian Nunez. So Chang in this first half, 11 for 16, 154 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. Hawaii striking deep, lethally through the air. 107 left in the first half. Bayat will kick off. Dessart and George are deep, both dangerous runners. Broussard, five yards deep, he will not return it. So San Jose State has a chance here to come back and tie it. It is 21 to 14. Hawaii leading for the first time in this game. But still an opportunity for San Jose State as you look at Fritz Hill. Fritz Hill, one of five African American head coaches on the Division I level. And he has done everything in his lifetime. He was a second lieutenant in the uh, United States Army. He has a, a bronze star from his campaign at Desert Shield and Desert Storm. He's managed a shoe repair store. Then uh, also a laundromat. He was in real estate development. And he has a PhD in education, one of only two Division I coaches with PhDs. Back is Rogers. He wants to go long. He throws it long. That is broken up at the last instant by Manuma. It was intended for Skillern, and Skillern had a step, and he almost had the ball. And Manuma reached out and was able to break it up. And you gotta wonder what Hawaii's defense is thinking with a minute left to go. San Jose State has to pass the ball. You cannot let anybody get behind you deep. But Manuma, terrific job there. Stick, right at the last minute, he sticks his left hand out and uh, gets it on the ball and in, in, in interrupts the pass, breaks up the pass. It was almost turnabout as fair play for San Jose State. Now you see the kind of potential that they have. Four wide receivers. Thompson is a single setback. Rodgers gives it to Thompson. Thompson horse collared as he gets over the 25 yard line and we may have a face mask called on Tony Akpan. Akpan, the Nigerian, the ex-basketball player, may have reached out and contacted the face mask. 53 seconds left to play in this first half, 21-14, Hawaii leading. You see Akpan there, he goes to make the tackle. And uh, to his credit, he let go. A lot of guys, it's hard to let go because you're, you're trying to make the tackle and your hand just squeezes, your fingers close on, no on the defender. There is no foul on the play. The face mask was not grabbed. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's not hard to believe. To. That's hard. That's not according to the replay. Well, Fritz Hill is saying, you know, you, you really do need an optometrist here. And according to the replay, I thought the face mask was. Well, it was such a good job of Akbon, by Akbon of letting it go. That's just a bad call. Yeah. That's a bad call. Yeah, bad call. Third down and seven. Ball at the 23 for San Jose State. Rodgers again to throw. Rolling. Rogers eludes one and then gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Credit the secondary of Hawaii because Rogers certainly had the time to throw it, but he had no one to throw it to. Right. Hawaii rushed four guys, sent everybody back into coverage. That long pass that they broke up, that Manuma broke up, you know, woke them up. They're not letting anybody get deep on them now. So that'll bring up, that'll bring up fourth down, 39 seconds left. And Hawaii could get another chance here. So maybe not the best idea to go out of bounds that time by Rogers. 
Prather into punt for San Jose State. And there, waiting, Chad Owens. And Owens waiting with excellent field position. There's the punt. Owens, it's a draw, line drive punt. Taken at the 44. Owens at midfield. 45. Owens headbutts his way to the 41 yard line. And Hawaii, with 29 seconds left, has a chance to take some shots at the end zone. 32 yard punt and a 15 yard return. And remember, Ayat earlier this year kicked a 56 yarder, so they don't need to get too much further to be within his range. Coming up on the end of this uh, first half from Aloha Stadium. Rivers walking out to his position on the far side. They overload the right side with Komine. Moments ago, a 46 yard touchdown pass. Also, Komile and Owens. Chang throws, tipped, tipped, and incomplete. Boy, Chang threw that into a crowd. It was almost like a hotel lobby in that secondary. Everybody had a shot at that pass. Well, you're right. It took him a long time to throw that pass. If you'd thrown it a, a second or two earlier, you'd have had at least two receivers open. San Jose is confused on this side, on the right side. Their cornerback, number four, is confused because the guys he defends, Komini is open all night. He has been open the whole first half. They're, they got to go back into the locker room at halftime and correct that. Three wide receivers to the right. Rivers, solo receiver to the left. Chang throws over the middle, crossing pattern. This is Owens. Owens trying to break a tackle and get to the outside. Couldn't do it. Ezekiel Staples halted his progress. 13 seconds. Clock ticking. Timeout has been called. Hawaii will take this timeout as you look at uh, June Jones. June Jones in his sixth year. 42 and 28 in the wacky is 26 and 17. He is 10 and 13 on the road here at Aloha Stadium. He's a very comfortable 31 and 15, and Fritz Hill is beside himself. Fritz Hill, he, last, wants, he wants to talk to everybody here. Last year, when we went out to San Jose, for, uh, Jim went in and talked to Fritz, so he's an extremely positive guy. Will not field any negative questions. Not feeling very positive right there. And he may be upset with June Jones being on the field. So you can't let him do that. You can't let him come on the field. June Jones yelling across at the uh, referee. June Jones, however, very calmly, collectively, stoically, remains on the field and is talking with his uh, with his team. And at the same time, Prince Fritz Hill is just seething on the near sideline. Well, Hawaii's got a timeout left with uh, 13 seconds. You can try to get in better field goal position, call a timeout and kick it, or go take a shot into the end zone, and maybe get call another timeout or whatever and kick a long field goal. There's some options here, and June Jones is trying to is, uh, certainly right now talking it over with Tim Chan. Fritz Hill in his fourth year for San Jose State, 14 and 27. He has never defeated Hawaii. He is 0 3 against the Warriors. He still hands on hips glaring across the field at the Hawaii huddle. So they are positioning. That's an interesting way of carrying the uh, charts there. It's one way. So I could walk around like that. Nice to hiding my belly. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and inches for Hawaii. But they want more than that. 13 seconds left. They lead 21 to 14 over San Jose State as you look at June Jones. See what Hawaii does here as they will come out of the huddle. Rivers again will go to the far side and he is picked up by Gerald Hardy. To the near side is Komine. Komine is watched by Tristan George. So man-to-man -man coverage. Now they drop off. The defense does. Chang throws for Rivers. Rivers turned one way and then tried to turn to the other. Excellent coverage by Gerald, Gerald Hardy. Seven seconds remaining here in the first half. Well, they went for the touchdown. And now uh, 
You're going to have to go for a long field goal. This is Justin Ayat. He has a 56 yarder, the longest field goal in the WAC this season. This will be a 49 yarder angled from the left. Ayat getting ready to kick it and a timeout. Time out. San Jose State. San Jose State has called the timeout. We have mentioned before that Ayat uses Umbro Speciale <laughs> shoes. But every time we mention that, something goes wrong. You know, Maybe we shouldn't mention the Umbro I, Speciale shoes. I was shoes. talking to him earlier this week, and uh, I asked him, you know, when you, when you miss the ball, and you watch that on film, is there anything different in your routine? Is there anything different in the way you kick it that makes you miss? And he said, no, it's, it's like when you're hitting the golf ball and, you, and you're driving it. You feel like you're swinging the same, and you know, you just don't know where it's going to go sometimes. And so he has that part. Now, I almost mentioned the shoes. Well, you know, what about the shoes? Those are uh, soccer shoes, but they're special soccer shoes. They're soft. And they and they are give. they really soccer shoes? Yes, they, you know what they are. They're Umbro Specialis. That's really a good, a good shoe. And that there Top they notch, are. Eh? There they are. See how he treats it? He's not rough with them at all. Probably keeps them in a special box filled with yeah. satin. They certainly go in the lock, the combination part of his locker. <laughs> yes. Fitzgerald still really upset about something. You know, you got to be in shape to be able to, to, to shove your charts in there because they only, the charts only fit in there and they, they, they sit straight up if you've got a flat deck. A lot of coaches put them in the back. Well, the 49-yard field goal now is taken center stage. You can turn on the spotlight and we'll have another timeout here as we are elongating our way. San Jose State. And Third another and final charge time out of the half. And another timeout for San Jose State. See what San Jose State is doing. They've seen tapes. They've seen Ayat miss extra points. They've seen him miss field goals. And so now they want him to think about it and think about it. And so San Jose State huddles up on the near sideline. You're right. You're right. Because he certainly has the leg strength. He could power it through. But. Uh, he does miss one once in a while, and uh, so San Jose State's giving him as much time as they, they can to make him think about his kick. What he should think about, of course, are very positive things, such as, I have done this before, I have covered this distance before, and besides that, I'm wearing Umbro Specialis. It is a shoe that I am not familiar with, that's for sure. They probably stalk him at UH. <laughs> they got three or four pairs for him. Mm -hmm. you know, they get scratched up. He's got to get a new. Well, we've waited long enough for this. That's for sure. 49 yarder on tap. Let's watch. Line drive kick. It's good. Very little loft to that. You could probably argue about it being aesthetically pleasing but it was effective nonetheless line drived it right through the two uprights i mean he really bombed it three more points go up and hawaii at the end of the first half leads by 10 49 yard field goal by justin ayat we waited a long time for that Fitz is still, he's after uh, referee Romeo. Here's uh, Mina Sugimoto. Mina? We have the coach here on the sidelines, and you've got to be happy just one touchdown down in the half, and coming off a bye with the intensity with which you're I'm sorry to hear You've got to be satisfied with the intensity. Not satisfied at all. Not satisfied at all. We didn't come over here for more. We came over to win the game. I'm not satisfied to go in here down at halftime. You seem to have real issues with the officiating, particularly at the end of the first half. What are some of your concerns with what's going on on the field? I don't know. I can't judge that. Right now, it's very emotional. I don't talk while I'm emotional. I just want a fair game called, and when somebody calls something, I just want I just want the call. I don't want anybody overruled. All right. Thanks a lot, Thank Coach. Back to Jim. Ah, uh, Fitzhill. See, Minna. Minna. Minna is a seasoned reporter. She She's, got right in there. She stuck right in there with the coach, and we uh, honor her for that. That's for sure. 24-14, Hawaii leading at halftime.
we're back here at Aloha Stadium on the sidelines, and look what we who we ran into, Hawaii head men's basketball coach Riley Wallace, a familiar fixture here. You come to a lot of the games here at Aloha Stadium. Yeah, I don't miss a home game. Uh, used to go to a few road games as well, but I love football, love to watch it, and uh, it's a you know spectacular thing goes on, especially here at homecoming. Well, speaking of homecoming, talk a little bit about the rich t tradition of homecoming of University of Hawaii Athletics. You've been part of UH for such a long time. Talk about the fans and just how much they get behind the programs. Well, it's always a week-long thing. They have some uh, you know, on-campus uh, events that they take part in and then a chance for the alumni to come back and be proud of their university. And it's always fun to watch the band because their alumni really come back in numbers and they put on a great show for them. But it's just a way of forming tradition, which we, we were late getting at the University of Hawaii. And the homecomings is a way to bring the alumni out and let them be proud of something. And the football team seems to always win on homecoming. I'm a huge football fan, but as you know, I'm a huger basketball fan. Season opener coming up on November 23rd. How's the team looking for this season? Well, it, it's you know, we're in our seventh practice, and, and uh, we're going to scrimmage tomorrow, so we'll see a little bit more about it. But we got a lot of new faces, learning things. We've got some talent out there, but uh, it's going to take a while to put it together, so we may have to be patient early on uh, until we get it going, but I think we're going to be pretty good. Now, Hawaii's ahead at this point, so good news as we wind up the day so far. Bad news earlier today because you're a St. Louis Cardinals fan. Yeah, bottom of the eighth home run, uh, lost to the Sox 11-9, uh, to nine, but uh, tradition has it on our side. The last two times we played Boston, we won in seven, so I expect it to go a long way, and we get them back in St. Louis in a, a regular baseball stadium, not some little matchbox like uh, Boston, but uh, uh, I'm really a Cardinal fan, and I think we'll pull it out. Your review of what's going on here in the first half, both teams coming out with some high level of intensity. They both want to win. They're both coming off of losses. Yeah, both of them need a win, you know, and it'll be 500 and get back into this thing. But uh, San Jose State can go up and down the field. They scored 70 points against uh, a Rice team that beat us, but we're looking good. You know, Chim Timmy was able to go deep and uh, score on some passes there and, and then a good uh, field goal there at the end. So we just got to keep up uh, the offensive end of it. And the defense seems to be adjusting. Coach Riley Wallace, I apologize for drawing you off the field. I know that you were so wanting to go in and do that hula at halftime. Well, they wanted me to hula at halftime, <laughs> but uh, that's a little far fetched for me to do. All right, we'll send it back up to your good friend, Jim Leahy, upstairs. Okay, thanks, uh, Coach. Thanks, uh, Mina. When you look at the second half, uh, we will get to that in a moment, but we have to look back in a little history now, and that is the statistics of the first half. You see the first downs. You see the rushing yards. San Jose State 130, Hawaii 68, and then you flip it 163 yards for Hawaii in passing, and the total offense 231 to 159. The turnovers, both Hawaii turnovers or interceptions, they have been turned into touchdowns. And you see the points off of turnovers by San Jose State, 14 to nothing. Take a looking, uh, looking now at the touchdowns of the first half. This is a three-yard pass to Rufus Skillern from Rogers. That was the first touchdown. Then Brewster on a seven-yard run getting into the end zone. That tied it at seven. Then uh, it was this fake field goal and then the pitch to Carr and Jeff Carr goes over with a six yard run then Wes Kalikipi with a one yard run goes plows his way into the end zone and then Kamini probably the play of the first half 46 yard touchdown pass from Tim Chang to Britton Kamini Kamini catches it in stride fantastic throw Hawaii then at that point led 21 to 14 they then added a 49 yard field goal it's 24 to 14 at halftime. Now we get to the second half and you and I have been talking about this and we're rather perplexed as to why San Jose State does not just run the ball. They have been successful in doing that putting together long drives and when you do that uh, Thompson has 77 yards in the first half all on the ground. You think we'll see more of that. That seems to be working. Well I, I think you sh we should see more of that because it got that huge offensive line and because of Hawaii's uh, lack of depth on the defensive line I think they should have run the ball a lot more in the first half and, I, and they should run the ball a lot more in the second half they will wear down off Hawaii's defensive front because they've got the size and Hawaii doesn't have the depth and Ho Hawaii too should I, they're doing a terrific job on the ground running Brewster and Kelly keeper are averaging over four yards a carry and that's terrific for a running game so it's a you know it's a nice changeup for Hawaii. We'll be back with the second half right after these messages.
Michael, I, I need someone to work late tonight. I know it's after five, and I know you probably have plans. By the way, you uh, smell really good. Thank you. Introducing Red Zone Body Wash from Old Spice. With eight-hour scent technology, the great smell lasts all day, whether you want it to or not. Yeah, you do smell good. New Red Zone Body Wash. Perfect timing. Monday Night Football. And... Whoa. The perfect meal. Hot, fresh pizza and great-tasting buffalo wings. Thanks, man. Domino's Pizza congratulates ABC's Monday Night Football on its 35th anniversary. Monday Night Football and Domino's. It's all you need. Guys, guys, come on. Touchdown Irish! ABC Sports Saturdays, the home of college football. Twenty-four fourteen, as we uh, are about to start the third quarter to find out what's on tap from Heineken. Let's go down to the field where Minasugi Moto is standing by with Hawaii head coach June Jones. At the, at the end of the first half and all the questions around the defense, um, you've got to be happy somewhat with how they've stepped up here in the first half. Well, it's, it's twenty-four fourteen, and uh, we made some plays both sides of the ball, but we're still we lost TJ again there, so that's kind of bothersome. But hopefully, we can hold them off here and, and put it away. What are some of the adjustments you hope to make in the second half to pull this one out? Well, defensively, we got to uh, stop the run still. I don't think they can beat us passing the football. So if we can just consistently stop the run and then offensively, we got to just kind of be patient because they're playing real deep zone. Just one last question. The opposing coach obviously had some current concerns with the officiating towards the end of the first half. He was a little animated there on the sidelines. Um, your comments on what's going on on the field? I really don't have any comment on the officials. Uh, it seems to me they're the same every week. All right, thank you very much, Coach Jones. Justin Ayat will kick off to start the second half. 24 to 14, Hawaii leading by 10. And the kickoff will go deep. And it will go to Broussard inside the five. Broussard is hit and dropped. Making the play for Hawaii. Right there is Keo Maka. Keo Maka, number uh, 39, Ryan Keo Maka, 5'7 freshman out of Roosevelt High School in Honolulu. First down for San Jose State. The ball is on the 14 yard line. Thompson is a single setback. Skiller and Miranda and Brassard are the wide receivers. And Thompson probes the Hawaii secondary very quickly, very effectively, and gets out from the line of scrimmage, the 14 all the way to the 21 yard line. Abraham Elamimian coming over from his corner spot to make the stop. Just underway in the second half, Hawaii leading by 10. And that is what we expect San Jose State to do. If they're able to run, run, and run the ball, that will keep the Hawaii offense off the field. And we'll be able to have San Jose State come back and challenge. Again, instead of running straight ahead, they give the ball on a slant to Thompson, and he is very close to the first down, maybe a yard short. Hawaii has a four man front here. The offensive line is going to reach Brock. They're all going to step to their left and try and find a lineman to block, a defensive lineman to block. Nice job by Hawaii's defensive line of. Uh, 
stuffing the blockers and making that running back stop behind the lineman and get confused and get gobbled up. Kamaka Vivaoli unable to uh, rise here. Oh, no, excuse me. That is uh, that is not uh, Kamaka Vivaoli. That's Matt Funga. So Funga helped to the side. No, that's Lincoln Monotai. No, that's Lincoln Monotai. They're showing us Matt Funga, and then now it's Lincoln Monotai. Monotai is uh, the backup on the far side to Kamaka Vivaoli. Third down and one, high formation. Collier, the fullback, Thompson, the tailback. Rogers, Thompson. Thompson is spun around at the line of scrimmage. He may not have made it. Depends on the spot. Excellent job by Watson Ho'ohuli and Lamar Broadway. The, de the defensive line does a good job of absorbing the blocks. Watson Ho'ohuli steps up into the hole from his inside linebacker position. Paul Lutu Carroll comes down from his outside linebacker position. They both hit the running back at the same time and stop him. Uh, and we'll see if he's got the first down or not. It has just started the terrain. It is not a heavy rain, very light rain. We'll see whether that affects play. It's going to have to rain a while. Here is the measurement. They are short. You see that play the lineman again the, the, the offensive line fire out there's a hole Watson Hooli steps up into it and there's Lutu Carroll number 13. They both arrive at the same time and uh, keep him from making the first down. So that will bring up a situation here for San Jose State. That is fourth down in inches. So San Jose State will take a chance here. True, it is. It's only an inch or so, but we'll see. Rogers dives. He should have the first down. Dives to the 25-yard line. Took the shortest route possible, and he was able to get to get in there. Rogers takes a snap. He he jumps over and sticks the ball out before uh, tucking it back in. To make sure that he got the first down. So it is the first down for San Jose State. Lamar Ferguson has come in as the uh, running back. Four wide receivers. Under center is Rodgers. He will throw. That is complete. Boy, everybody had a shot at that. And the whistle blows. Broussard is held up by Elaminian. That ball was thrown on such a slant. It went by at least three players. So they will put the ball down on the 30 yard line. Boy that's a very generous spot. And it will be second down and five for San Jose State. Skiller and Miranda and Broussard are the wide receivers. Ferguson remains in the backfield. He gets the call. Ferguson goes through the hole, breaks a tackle, and is spun down by Matt Funga on the 35-yard line. That again, very close to the first down marker. They could be inches short again. And you see Ferguson here. He's so he's 5'5. It looks like there's no hole there for him to get through, but he's small enough to just, like I said, he squeezes through holes that normal running backs cannot. Third down and inches for San Jose State. San Jose State, as long as they are moving the ball, they are not concerned with the clock. They know Hawaii's offense cannot come back onto the field. Lance Martin goes in as a single setback. Third down, it is Martin. First down and much more. Out over the 40 to the 43-yard line. So San Jose State, Dougie, doing exactly what we thought they would do, and even what they should do. Run the ball. Another first down. Okay, well, that was a trap play. The center blocked the Matt Funga to his left. The left guard pulled around and blocked Funga for a hole right up the middle. First down on the 43 yard line for San Jose State. A fumble recovered by Hawaii. They tried to get too cute. They tried to get too cute. They tried the reverse. 
And the ball popped loose. They gave it to Broussard from Thompson. And Lamar Broadway fell on it. And that that's a bad call. That's a terrible call. They, they, they don't need that. They're running the ball effectively right up the middle. The, the play before that, they run the ball right up the middle. Then they try to get cute, like you say, Jim, too cute. And it looked like there was confusion whether it was a fake reverse or whether it was a real reverse. Boy, the reason for that play will be questioned and is being questioned. That's a turnover, first turnover of the game for San Jose State. Hawaii with excellent field position on the 35-yard line. Timmy Chang now leads, now needs 396 yards to break the record. Back to pass, looking over the middle, throws long for the end zone. It is almost picked off deep in the end zone by Brian Nunez. Chang throwing into double coverage. Ball was intended for Chad Owens deep, and that will bring up second down and 10. And Nunez was the safety who got beat by Comini on that long touchdown pass. He saw that time how deep he was in coverage. There, he wasn't letting uh, the receiver get by him on that play. That's why when Hawaii runs the ball, it helps the passing game because it sucks those safeties up to make tackles. So Khalid Kipi has come in as the running back here, second down and 10 from the 35. Crossing pattern thrown high off the hands that time of Owens. And it was up for grabs in that secondary. You can see uh, Coach Jones motioning to Chang about the delivery. That ball just kind of floated too high. Third down and 10 from the 35 yard line for Hawaii. That offensive line, given what they have without a tight end have performed marvelously well in giving Timmy Chang a chance to throw. We'll see if they run Kipi here or whether they will go to the air again. Triple wide receiver to the right. Chang looking right. Now throws. It is off the hands of the intended receiver Chad Owens. So Chang unable to make the connection. And it looked like number 21 Eric Wilson got a hand on the ball. Well, might have, might have, but uh, certainly just didn't get to the receiver. He talked about the offensive line and how they, they are doing a terrific job and they don't have a tight end. That was That's what makes them valuable in the NFL, Jim, because they're on an island every play out there blocking one-on-one. -on -one. And when they get to the NFL, they're just really good at pass blocking. 52-yard attempt by Ayat. He has a 49-yarder tonight and early in the season, a 56-yarder longest in the whack this year. It is placed. It is kicked. It is. That may have been tipped. That may have been tipped. It is not good. So Hawaii comes up with nothing following the San Jose State turnover. 10:41 left to play in the third quarter. Hawaii by 10. Michael, I need someone to work late tonight. I know it's after five, and I know you probably have plans. By the way, you uh, smell really good. Thank you. Introducing Red Zone Body Wash from Old Spice. With eight-hour scent technology, the great smell lasts all day, whether you want it to or not. Yeah, you do smell good. New Red Zone Body Wash. Dun, 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 dun. Monday Night Football, and... Whoa, the perfect meal. Hot, fresh pizza and great tasting buffalo wings. Thanks, man. Domino's Pizza congratulates ABC's Monday Night Football on its 35th anniversary. Monday Night Football and Domino's. It's all you need. Guys, guys, come on. Touchdown, Irish! <laughs> ABC Sports Saturdays, the home of college football. Let's check out tonight's Fantastic Sam's Fantastic Fans. Fantastic Sam's reminds you to visit 
one of its 20 full service salons in Hawaii, including Hawaii Kai Town Center and Kaimuki and Eva Beach Shopping Center. That's former Rainbow Anthony Smith, now one of Honolulu's finest. Fantastic sand. It's got to be there. First down for San Jose State. We have a penalty flag on that run by Thompson from the 35. Thompson out close to the 40 yard line. Could be holding, and it is on San Jose State. Fitzhill seems to be very much under control here in the third period. Holding off number 76. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. Matt Cantu, the center. Called for holding 6 3, 290, the sophomore. He's from San Juan, Capistrano, California. So the holding moves the ball from the 35 back to the 25 yard line. It is still first down, but now it is first and 20 for San Jose State. Remember, San Jose State has been successful with consistent drives and running plays. See if they try to make up the stagger here. Rogers drops straight back. Rogers is grabbed, gets away. Now throws. That is incomplete. He intended it for Thompson out of the backfield. Matt Funga with excellent pressure that time. Almost had a sack. This is a terrific pass rush by Louis Funga. He beats his offensive lineman right away and just saw, uh, well, he has the quarterback in his hand. And you just hate to see that let the quarterback get out of his grasp. Second down and 20 from the 25 yard line. From the shotgun. Rodgers fumbles the ball, picks it up, now throws. That is complete to Skillern. And Rufus Skillern is hit down. And that time it was Louis Fungo, the senior from Waipahu. There's two terrific plays in a row by Louis Funga. Louis Funga gets by his blocker so fast. And this is experience, Jim. He realizes immediately that something's going. See him stop right there, turns around, comes back, and makes the tackle almost as soon as the receiver gets the ball. Third down, ball out to the 26th. Third and 19, Chester Coleman has come into the game as a receiver. Five-man pattern. The throw is thrown behind Broussard. And he actually loses yardage. That'll bring up fourth down and long yardage. And San Jose State kind of stumbling here in the third period. Chad Kapanui covering on that play for Hawaii. And Chad Owens has come into the game, and he has an opportunity for another big return here. I got to say, nice stop by Hawaii's defense. Three and out. It's a terrific play. All all the defensive linemen on that series did really good jobs. Waylon Prather back to punt, waiting for the snap from center. Low snap, but it gets it away. Spiral drives Owens back to the 29-yard line, and here we go. Gets a block, trying to turn the corner. He does. Cuts up the middle of the field. One man to beat. He's in the open the third time is the charm. Chad Owens does it again the third time, this time at 71 yard. Punt return, 47 yard punt, and Owens turning the corner, getting a block, coming back over the middle. And he follows his interference to perfection, and all of a sudden he is running alone in a green pasture. Another huge punt return. Hawaii now leading 30 to 14. And the mistake by San Jose that time was on the punter. He kicked it, he kicked it so low and far that he outkicked his coverage. Ayak trying for the point after, and it is good. 31 to 14, Hawaii with 8.29 left to play in the third period.
dry rinse polymer soap. Pure filter technology. The new Mr. Clean Auto Dry Car Wash. Spot free shine with no need to dry. Guaranteed. I think he said, you're... Is nothing secret. The password is crazy. Is anything untouchable? Get that man a sports bra. Is there even one thing the boys won't do for a cheap laugh? <laughs> Park your butt in the cheap seats as they demolish bogus sports pompous jocks and announcers with bad hair. I see dead people. Cheap seats, 10 Eastern every Thursday night for a new look at the old games. Wow, wow, wow. Morning. What's up, bro? Welcome to the party. It's the ESPN Game Plan College Football Pay-Per-View Package. Get access to more than 150 extra college football games this season. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-DIRECTV, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Owens in this game tonight. Three receptions for 25 yards. Three punts. Three punts for 95 yards and one touchdown. 120 all-purpose yards in this game. That's amazing. There you see his season average, 16.9. He's had a 66-yard punt return, a 75-yard punt return, and tonight a 71-yard punt return. Ayat kicks it. It will go to Broussard, taking it on the two. Bassard trying to get some open space. Breaks a tackle. There's a big uh, shove from the back. No call. Bassard gets out to the 35-yard line. Oh, that was huge. 33-yard return. Let's take a look at this Chad Owens return from this angle. Owens gets a block, and then he's able to turn the corner, gets another block, and then angles back over the middle. And he was gone. And that was an incredible run by Owens, Jim. But you saw when he caught the ball, the closest San Jose State Spartan to him was a good 15 yards away. He had space to make decisions, to plan where he's going to run. When you face somebody like Owens, you've got to kick it high so that when he catches the ball, your players are right there, right next to him, making a tackle. 31 to 14, Hawaii leading. Now San Jose State from their own 35-yard line may have to pass more to play catch up. Ball is given to Thompson. Thompson is hit right at the line of scrimmage. Boy, the black shirt just put up a wall that time. Louis Funga was there. Coming from the end was Tony Akbon. And they were able to really close it off and wall him in. Second down and about nine and a half. Skillern to the far side. And to the near side comes Persaud. Single setback is Thompson. Rogers looking. Quick pass. That is complete to Broussard. Broussard is thrown down by Leonard Peters inside Hawaii territory at the 47-yard line. Well, you could see that coming. 16-yard gain. So again, the secondary of Hawaii tested. See Rogers looking all the way. So they put it on the 48. First and 10 for San Jose State. Rogers lays it off. That's a lateral. That's a free ball. That ball is kicked upfield and then it goes out of bounds. James Jones was the intended receiver. And San Jose State almost turned it over again. Did a nice job by Jones. Heads up play of getting that ball out of bounds because, you're, like you said, it was a lateral live ball. If UH had been able to fall on it, it would have been a turnover, and UH's offense would have trotted back onto the field. See, trying to get it here, and he kind of scooped it out of bounds. That could have been interpreted as trying to gather the ball in. Second down and 13 from the 48-yard line. 
Back to pass. Rodgers. Pump fakes. Now throws. Slant pattern incomplete. Threw it into double coverage. It was intended for Casey Miranda. Miranda trying for his fourth reception of the season. His first of the game. Covering on the play. You see there Alan Jones. And Alan Jones is back in coverage. And that ball went right by him. He had a chance at that interception. You saw him jumping up and down in frustration at the end of the play because he knows that he, he could have had his got his hands on that. Here comes San Jose State. They come out in a double tight end alignment. Single setback is Thompson. Third down 13. Rodgers back to pass. Eludes one tackler. Now Rodgers throws on the run and it is intercepted on the far side. And returning the ball up the field to the 20, to the 25 yard line is Leonard Peters. Peters with a second interception of the year. Second turnover for San Jose State. And we have a penalty flag. Has just been thrown following the play. So Leonard Peters goes deep into the secondary. The ball was intended for the tight end Josh Williamson. And it was overthrown. The play is an interception. After the player was down, we have a sideline warning charged to Hawaii for coming out onto the field. First charge, uh, sideline warning of the half. Well, immediately. You see there, Kamakaviva Ole beats the offensive tackle, comes in some pressure on Rodgers. He throws a bad pass, and what a beautiful catch by Peters. Over the head, right in his end, turns around, stays in bounds, and runs back for some yards. And then the penalty after, Jim, you've got to think that was a result of the uh, tantrum that Hill threw earlier about uh, Jones getting on the field. Well, actually, it was uh, just coming onto the field by Hawaii, too. Ball is given on the, the run to Brewster on first down from the 26 yard line. So Hawaii warned to stay back because of the fact that the exuberance they want to come out and celebrate a little bit they can't do it. So second down from the 20 just over the 26 yard line second down and nine. Brewster remains back with Tim Chang, who was thrown for 163 yards. Little pass to Brewster. Brewster to the 35. Brewster to the 36. He may have the first down. Sean McNamara, the defensive end, and Gerald Hardy. McNamara retreating from his defensive end position, and Hardy, the cornerback, coming up from the secondary to double team him. But when you pass a lot, the defensive linemen just pin their ears back and rush. And the screen play like that one right there is a very effective play because you get it behind the defensive lineman. The linebackers are dropping back into coverage. Your offensive linemen are in front of you blocking the linebackers. And that's why it's effective. So Hawaii comes out in their basic offense. It is a first down. Ball just short of the 37-yard line. Tim Chang looking to the left. Looks up the sideline. Now throws. It is a leaping attempt to catch that ball by Chad Owens. And they say no, did not have possession. But what an effort by Owen. Owen shortly after his electrifying 71 yard punt return. Owen's one of the first players to come out of the locker room before the game. I mean, he's out here. Roughing the passer, defense number 49, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. So roughing the passer called Tim Chang will get rid of this and then boom yeah that is roughing the passer. Tony Ficklin said he was pushed but uh, he is not he is not believed and the penalty moves the ball up and into San Jose State territory at the 49 yard line but to finish the thought on Chad Owens he's out here an hour before the game. And just running and getting loose and running. He must run 10 miles a game because he doesn't rotate. He doesn't go out. There's a pass up the near side to Rivers. And he's able to gather it in on the 41 yard line. Gerald Hardy covering him for San Jose State. 530 left to play 
in the third period. Hawaii leading 31 to 14. It's a nice job by Rivers of staying bound, and you notice the corners for San Jose State, for San Jose State, they're giving the receivers a lot, a big cushion. So Rivers realizing that turns around, catches it right in his hands, and does a terrific job of staying in bounds. Tomini flanked to the right side. He's caught the 46-yard touchdown pass earlier in the game. Ball is given up the middle, and with it is Brewster, and Brewster ran right into the blitz. That time San Jose State was blitzing. Brewster, if he could get by the blitz, would have some open territory, but he couldn't do it. Arnell Ransom was there. So that'll bring up third down and three for Hawaii on the 42 yard line of San Jose State, with Hawaii leading 31 to 14. Timmy Chang, earlier in the week, there was some talk about him playing in this game, but he has appeared to be fine, very fine. That left shoulder, his non throwing shoulder, is the injured one. As he closes in on the all time passing record. Ball is thrown. That is complete. Comine. 35. Comine to the 31. And a first down. Britton Comine. Brian Nunez finally diagnosed the play and he was able to make the tackle on the 31. An 11 yard gain. And a terrific read by Timmy Chen because San Jose blitzes the linebacker and the safety from the right side. So he turns where the blitz is coming from and throws to Comine, who's in an open area because those blitzers have vacated it. Comine, six catches, 120 yards now, and one touchdown. And Timmy Chang has now passed for 191 yards in the game. First down from the 31-yard line of San Jose State. The ball is thrown and almost intercepted. Ball was thrown for Rivers. Rivers had broken to the inside. The ball was thrown behind him. And Eric Wilson had an interception. I mean, he was the only one in a position to catch the ball. And the ball escaped from his grasp. Let's go down to uh, Minna on the sideline. With a word here on the sidelines, Pomele left the field and went straight into the locker room. I'm being told that he has some soreness in his left arm. They're going to try to do some x-rays. It could range from a bruise all the way to a broken left arm. I'll let you know as soon as I have something. Okay, thanks, Minna. Pomele, one of the uh, starters, he has been replaced by Gerald Welch in the slot to the left. Second down and 10 from the 31. Up the middle, Brewster, big hole. 25-20, Brewster all the way to the 15. And we have a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. So we'll see if they call it on number 59. Derek Fa'ave. Holding offense number 59. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Well there was a big hole right up the middle and uh, we'll see here. Derek Fa'ave. You see how he gets his arms around behind, behind the defensive lineman's shoulder. The referee will call that holding every single time. I was amazed by the hole on that play. I mean, it was just wide open. You heard the, the old bromide about driving a truck through it. I mean, it could have been a semi. Well, the penalty moves it back to the 41-yard line, where it is second down and 20. Triple wide receiver to the left. Comini on the right. Chang throws. Complete. That is to Welch. Welch, who had two touchdown passes in the losing effort against Utah, comes up with his first reception of the game. Gerald Hardy covering on the play. But Chang, he knows all about Welch. They were together in high school, and they know each other's moves. That was an example of it right there. That ball placed right in there again. You're right. Welch and Chang, all Americans in high school at St. Louis. You know, there have been, there, people could say that Welch isn't the fastest guy out there in the receiving court, but he gets open and he's got sure hands, makes terrific catches every time he gets, every game he gets into. Timmy Chang, 16 for 27, 214 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Chang throws to the flat. That is complete to Rivers. Rivers able to spin around the defender, get inside the 10, and go all the way to the five-yard line. Sean McNamara finally holds him to the turf. 14-yard gain, and it will be first and goal to go for Hawaii. You see Rivers, he comes back after he catches the ball. He's being defended 
that was a zone blitz, so you had a defensive end come out and uh, defend that zone, and no match for Rivers' speed. Able to beat McNamara on that inside loop. First down for Hawaii at the five. And Satcher has come back into the game. The pitch back to Brewster, and Brewster is, uh, I mean, he is horse collared by Brian Nunez. Nunez, one of the safeties, appeared in the backfield. Satcher pitching the ball to him. And Brewster was just swallowed up. So this is the second time that we have seen Brandon Satcher in the game, the freshman from North Augusta, South Carolina. Yeah, and he's in the game because he can run, not because he's expendable. You're right, Jim. And you saw him after he made the pitch, he made a terrific block on the outside linebacker. But the, the other defender went up and made a nice play on Brewster. So Timmy Chang now has come back in. Second down, goal to go, but now the ball back at the 11 yard line. Chang looking end zone, looking end zone, throws, incomplete. He wanted it in the hands of Welch. That'll bring up third down. Bobby Goodness and Josh Powell double covered on the play. One of the first uh, receivers he will look at will be Welch when Welch is in the game. There you see Keith Burns. Keith Burns is the defensive coordinator for San Jose State. He was the former head coach at the University of Tulsa. He's added a lot of energy to that San Jose State coaching staff. Third down, goal to go. Pass is complete at the five yard line. And with it is Gerald Welch. And Welch is spilled at about the six. So that will bring up fourth down. With 2.25 left to play here in the third period, and Justin Ayat will come back onto the field to add to Hawaii's lead, trying to make it 34 to 14, giving Hawaii a 20 point bulge out of the hold of Milne. The long snapper is Bryce Rungi. So this is a field goal chip shot, only a 20 yarder. It's down. It is kicked. And it is good. Hawaii. Now let's see. We have a penalty flag. Hawaii leaving the field. San Jose State sticking around. Here's a referee Romeo. Offside against San Jose State. Offside defense number four lined up in the neutral zone score a field goal. So Hawaii now leading. Over San Jose State by 20 34 to 14. Ooh, look dear pilots like OTC guys one pill a day 24 hours zero heartburn. How's that work? Sign the frequent heartburn guy next to you. Whoa, here's how. It's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of those acid producing pumps in your stomach. That's why it's the only OTC that can work for 24 hours with one pill a day. Awesome. Prilosec OTC, one, one pill, pill a day, 24, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Wallace is gonna push it himself. Drives the lane, takes it strong to the hole. This is shaping up to be a blowout. The number one rated NBA game that IGN calls the most complete hoops game on the market. Now with Next Movement Technology. ESPN NBA 2K5 from ESPN Video Games. It's going to be huge. Rated E for everyone. It started with a buzz that became a roar. Everyone who was in the rear of the plane is gone. Nearly 30 million were riveted. They're probably thinking the same thing about us. By its epic premiere. There must be a power source on the island. There's other people here who don't just give a crap. Now is the time to get lost. Did you see anything? Get any kind of look at it? In the new drama. What is it that we're hunting? America is talking about. An all-new Lost. Wednesday, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. 
You can uh, click on to BigIslandCandies.com or call 1-800-935510 to order your favorite treats. Big Island Candies, home of the original chocolate dipped shortbread cookies and more. So as they have all game long, Tristan George and John Broussard deep for San Jose State. Ayat kicks it. It will go to Broussard. Two yards deep in the corner of the end zone, and he elects not to return it. So Hawaii taking a page out of the San Jose State defensive playbook in the first half, turning turnovers into points, and they take the interception and turn it into a chip shot field goal. And here you see the uh, second half possessions for San Jose State in the third quarter. They've had a fumble, a punt returned for a touchdown and an interception. So just a terrible half for a terrible quarter, excuse me, for the San Jose State Spartans. Tyson Thompson, the single setback again behind Dale Rogers, quarterback. It is a pitch to Thompson. Thompson in trouble. Down he goes. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Hawaii able to string the play out, and you can credit Tony Akbar. Yeah, and they're getting really good penetration up front there, which uh, limits the uh, opportunities, the holes that the running back can go through. And he's got to try and string it out and hope that a hole develops, and that time nothing did. Timmy Chang now, 236 yards in passing. As far as San Jose State is concerned. Rogers seven for 17 49 yards one touchdown one interception Rogers to throw again that's tipped excellent play that time and that was Kamaka Viva Ole so Kamaka Viva Ole able to get his hands up that pass intended for Broussard and Keel is having a pretty nice game he's getting good pressure on the stunts he's getting around his block and he's getting in the backfield and that time he's a nice job of going out on those zone blitzes, he comes out in coverage, and you know he's a fast defensive end. Hawaii's defensive ends are doing a good job, and Kila, especially, of getting out there and covering receivers. Third down and 11. Ball just short of the 20-yard line. Rogers drops straight back, looks over the middle. He'll run. 25 has the first down, gets all the way out to the 34-yard line. Good 15-yard run that time by Rogers. See, Rogers uh, gets the ball, goes back in the pocket, and uh, he has some time, but not, you know, good coverage by Hawaii secondary, so he just pulls, tucks the ball down and heads up field. And uh, the, the defender there probably thought he was going to slide. He didn't. He, he stuck his shoulder down and went forward. Dale Rogers, the quarterback, fraud of Chafee College, and before that, Cal Poly, triple transfer. Ball is given to Ferguson, trying to find running room, still on his feet. Turns the corner at the 40, trying to get to the sideline, cuts back up over the middle, and gets all the way to the 47-yard line. That's a 12-yard gain. Ferguson can drive you crazy, and that was an example of it right there. If you want a weekly reminder about upcoming Hawaii athletic events, then subscribe to HMail on the UH website. The UH website is hawaiiathletics.com. So first down for San Jose State. The final seconds of the third quarter ticking away. Hawaii leading 34 to 14. They fake the handoff. Rogers in trouble. Gets away from Kamaka Viva Oli. And Rogers stumbles over midfield into Hawaii territory. And we could have holding and we do on William Obang the offensive tackle on the left side. Holding offense number 79 10 yard penalty from the previous spot will repeat first down there will be one untimed down before the quarter exchange. So time has run out here in the third period so we'll have one more. I tell you at least at least three defenders had a good shot at uh, Rogers at time Jim and then he finally gets knocked down. But uh, you know he's going to start feeling like a used pinata here pretty soon. So this this play will be on time. 
because of the penalty. The ball is moved back to the 37 yard line. William Obeng, they called it on him for holding 6'6", 307 pound senior out of Chicago. He went to Masabi Range College. First down and 20, last play of the third quarter. Ball is out to James Jones. And Jones is hunted down on the sideline as he crosses the 40 to the 41 yard line by uh, that's uh, number five, Chad Kapanui. You were drinking gungee water trying to blow my head. Love a dilly woman. Stop and lay my money down. Well, if you don't stop it, babe. Find yourself sleeping in the ground. Every Wednesday night, ESPN Classic gets your Irish up. We're gonna get them on a run, we're gonna go, 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 go. Every Wednesday night, ESPN Classic has a golden dough. Here we go. Goodbye. Every Wednesday night, there's only one place to find the fighting Irish. Touchdown. With the dominant players, the legendary games, and the inside stories, you'll have a better seat than the band. Classic Notre Dame, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, Wednesdays on ESPN Classic. Who's the best receiver? Marvin Harris. Randy Moss and oh, his story. The Go deeper! What's going on inside the receiver's head? What's going inside the ball's head? What's going inside the head of the pig that became the ball? Is that little pig a thinking, hey, why is that dude coming at me with a butcher's knife out of a pig, Irwin? Sunday NFL Countdown, the hardest working pregame show in football. Sundays at 11 on ESPN, presented by Old Spice. Where would we be without the highlight? Would anyone remember the drive, the catch, or the tuck? Would anyone ever say, did you see that? ESPN has spent 25 years putting the spotlight on the highlight, and it's all right here in ESPN 25 The Book. 25 mind-bending, eye-popping, culture-morphing years of highlights. A tribute to the plays you remember and the people that brought them to you. Plus, for the first time ever, an exclusive DVD with over 30 classic Sports Center commercials. ESPN 25 The Book, available now. 34 to 14 as we begin the fourth period. Jim Leahy along with Doug Violetta. It is second down for San Jose State on their own 41 yard line. Rolling again is Rogers. Rogers likes to tuck and run, directing traffic. Now he will tuck it over midfield and all the way down to the Hawaii 42 yard line. Hawaii much too soft that time. Didn't really get any pressure on him until he had committed to run the ball 17 yards. Yeah and Hawaii can't relax they're up by a lot but they're up by 20 but uh, this is a team that scored 70 on rice so they can't relax you know they, they can't afford to give this team any cushion because they can't come back and score a lot of points on. So San Jose State has advanced the ball. The just outside the 42 yard line of Hawaii as we begin the fourth the fourth period of play. Broussard is to the far side and Skiller to the near side. Thompson a single setback behind Rogers. Fakes the handoff to Thompson steps up has all day throws for the end zone. We want Skiller leaping attempt batted away by Illuminian. Illuminian comes up Gimpy. Trying to walk it all. This is a, f a play action fake here. When he throws that ball, it's in the air a long time, and Elamimian is right there. It comes over the shoulder at the end of the play to bat the ball down. Nice play. But Elamimian comes up, gingerly walks, tries to walk it off. And he's still out at the corner, not walking well. Tyson Thompson back in. And now we have a uh, timeout, official timeout. Timeout, San Jose State. First charge timeout of the half. 
So now San Jose State calling uh, the timeout with 14 42 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Away leading 34 to 14 as you look at Fitz Hill. Michael, I need someone to work late tonight. I know it's after five, and I know you probably have plans. By the way, you uh, smell really good. Thank you. Introducing Red Zone Body Wash from Old Spice. With eight-hour scent technology, the great smell lasts all day, whether you want it to or not. Yeah, you do smell good. New Red Zone Body Wash. where the hoop is with the ESPN Full Court College Basketball Pay-Per-View Package. Bring more than 450 of the best games right into your home each week, all season long. To order, call your local cable company at 1-877-ONLY-CABLE, DirecTV at 1-800-GET-SPORTS, or DISH Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Every Tuesday, join us in honoring Jim. You look great. A man of social grace. So, when's the baby due? A man who nurtures. Oh, look at you. It looks like it's going to be a big one. A man who's big enough. I think it's going to be twins. To admit. I already had the baby. He's wrong. Are you sure? I, I, I thought I felt the kick. Oh, you will later. According to Jim, every Tuesday at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. 14-42 left to play in the game. Hawaii up by 20 points, 34 to 14. Second down and 10, the ball at the 43-yard line of Hawaii. From the shotgun, a pitch to the near side to Thompson. Oh, he able to get into the secondary, get to the sidelines, and is finally chased out of bounds at around the 15-yard line. What a run by Tyson Thompson. 27 yards. Oh. San Jose goes to the shotgun, then runs the option out of it. And when he gets the ball, he just does a nice job of running away from defenders. Good job of the receivers blocking in front of him. And Leonard Peters here has got to watch out because out of bounds, they gave him an inadvertent shove. And the, the Thompson ended up running into the advertisement on the side. You don't want to get a flag down there in, in your own end zone area. Thompson has gone over 100 yards now in rushing. 20 carries, 106 yards. Ball is just short of the 15 yard line. And we have a false start. It is going to be on Josh Williamson, the tight end, number 83. So this does not help. Here comes San Jose Dead State. Ball. False start, offense, number 83, five yard penalty, still first down. That doesn't help San Jose State at all. And you know, I've been there, Jim, when you've got. The momentum of a nice drive going, and then you, yourself, you're the guy that jumps offside. You just feel terrible walking back to the huddle, and you just say sorry to everybody around you. So San Jose State will come out with a double tight end. Single setback is Tyson Thompson. It's a big offensive line, first down and 15. Back to pass Rodgers, four-man pattern, throws for the end zone. That is complete touchdown. And that is Brian Wagey. Wagey is first touchdown, the tight end. He's from Arroyo Grande, California. And he transferred to San Jose State from Allen Hancock College. That's only his fifth pass reception of the year. But it is his third touchdown. And this, this looks a lot like uh, the plays that they were running last year. They threw to the tight end on the same route a lot last year in San Jose and were successful with it. I'm surprised that it's taken them this long to go back to that. He's able to throw over uh, Manuma. And Peters coming over the top late. Jeff Carr in to try the extra point. It's now 34 to 20. And Carr able to put it up and through. It is 34 to 21. So a 14 point game with 1427 left to play. San Jose State is back. Ooh, look. Dear Prilosec OTC guys, one pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn? How's that work? Sign the frequent heartburn guy next to you. Whoa, here's how. 
It's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of those acid-producing pumps in your stomach. That's why it's the only OTC that can work for 24 hours with one pill a day. Awesome! Prilosec OTC, one, one pill a day, 24, 24 hours, zero heartburn! Dry rinse polymer soap. Pure filter technology. The new Mr. Clean Auto Dry Car Wash. Spot free shine with no need to dry. Guaranteed. All right, Stephen A., here's how it works. Meddler gets to the ball. Stars lose their points. Who was known as the chief? Robert Parrish. Yes. The glove. Gary Payton. Correct. Chocolate Thunder. Daryl Dawkins. Yes. The Pearl. Earl Monroe. Got it. One more. Kangaroo Kid. Billy Cunningham. You got it. Got them all. Very nicely done. Darn Mettler. NBA Shootaround, the pregame show with all the answers, begins Wednesday, November 3rd on ESPN. Doug, we have some bad news from the sidelines down here on the Warriors' side, an injury report. We had mentioned that Se'e Pomele had left the field uh, nursing his arm. We're being told now that he actually fractured his forearm. He may be on his way to the hospital to get that taken care of, and I'm being told he's out for the season. Also, Mel Purcell was seen leaving the field as well. He looked like he was having a hard time catching his breath. Now I'm being told that he has a bruised chest back upstairs. Boy, the injuries just continue for Hawaii. Little short pooch kick that's taken on the 30 yard line by one of the up men over the 40 to the 45. And we'll try to decipher who carried that ball. <laughs> I have no idea. He disappeared into the black shirts. And you see Tim Chang come out. Justin uh, Faimea Lele. Faimea Lele able to uh, able to catch the ball and then he runs up gets tackled gets gang tackled and then disappears into the into the black shirt. Boy these are just great uniforms aren't they. Just great. First down from the 46 good field position Tim Chang throws that's complete Comine. Kamini able to advance the ball to the 44 yard line of San Jose State. Tristan George out of Berkeley, California at St. Mary's High School there to make the stop for San Jose State. And watch this throw, Jim. Kamini gets open, but he's not open by a lot. Chang throws that one on a rope and gets it to Kamini. And he, you know, the, his arm strength made that play. Yeah, he's uh, playing very solid football right now. Almost a 10 yard game. Clean Keepy has come back in. Chang looking, lays it off. This is complete to Kalik Keepy. Puts his head down, gets inside the 40 to the 39. That's enough for a first down. Tristan George able to corral him there. Kalik Keepy is a force. You know, he caught that ball and he turned up field. I immediately looked at the corner. And imagine you're 160, 170 pounds and a 260 pound running back coming at you. The corner slowed down coming up, waiting for his teammates to get there. He didn't want to get there first. You know. Tristan George did lead the defensive charge. Ball has advanced to the 39 yard line of San Jose State. Chang throws again. This is complete. And Chad Owens with another, Chad Owens with another catch. 16 yard game. Again a nice a nice throw nice protection by the offensive line good quick throw by Chang. And then he gets tackled and the ball causes the fumble it looked like and uh, so it's a good good catch or and, the, gr uh, the ground yeah. causing the yeah, fumble. I'm sorry the ground causing the fumble and it can't do that. Oh that that came out right before that went off his knee and Ezekiel Staples was there. Ooh, that's a tough call too. Hawaii has it inside the 25 yard line. Chang lays it off to Brewster with running room inside the 20. Brewster leaps to the 15. 
Brian Nunez finally covers him up, but Larry Collins made the first contact coming up from the secondary. So you Brewster. Know, Jim, this passing defense of San Jose State that has been at the top of the whack is getting torched tonight. They're, they're really having problems on the corners covering these receivers and making decisions between them and the safeties on who they're going to cover, which guy they've, they're locked on to. So Hawaii puts the strength on the left side with three wide receivers. Chang juggles for a moment, throws into the end zone. What a leaping attempt by Rivers. Rivers had it for an instant, a fingertip catch. That would be the catch of the year. I mean, he had gone airborne and was joyfully flying through the ozone to catch that one. Gerald Hardy covering on the play. That was close. You see Rivers, you've got a couple of people open. Chang decides to go to Rivers in the end zone. He leaves his feet, catches the ball, comes down the, he just can't hang on to it in the end zone. Can't hang on to it after he hits the ground. But he was airborne. Third down for Hawaii. Brewster in at the single setback. Boy, really spreading the field now. Third and two. Chang throws. That's a first down. Could be a touchdown. No. Gerald Welch again in traffic. Able to carry the ball after the reception inside the five yard line. So it will be first down goal to go for Hawaii. And Tim Chang just threading the needle. Tim Chang throwing the football with expertise. And you can see now how in sync the receivers are with the quarterback because San Jose State is only rushing three guys. There are eight defenders back there within 20 yards because you're down in the red zone. And Timmy Chang and the receivers are all on the same page. When he throws the ball, he's throwing to an area and the receivers get there. First down and goal to go from the two yard line. In motion is Welch. Goes to Brewster. Brewster almost to the goal line. Second, third effort before the white shirts halt his progress. Coming up on 11 minutes left to play in the game. And into the game comes Kali Kipi. Boy, the crowd loves to see Kali Kipi come into the game. He has one touchdown. Just bulldozed his way into the end zone last time. You might see the offensive line going a three-point stance here in their uh, fire-out stance. And, uh, Try to get some movement off the ball. Brewster, 11 carries, 28 yards, and one touchdown. Kipi, four carries, 18 yards, and one touchdown. Second down, goal to go. Kipi. Touchdown. So San Jose State comes back to make it a 14 point game and Hawaii answers with a very consistent drive highlighted by the great passing ability of Timmy Chang. He engineered that very well. It culminates here with Kali Kipi going over the end zone in the grasp of Ezekiel Staples. So it is now 40 to 21 and Ayat will try to make it. A 20 point game again out of the hold of Milne. Not good. Now this is an extremely hardly hard play to um, defend against because you get 330 pound Uriah Moyne or lead blocking for a 260 pound running back and all you've got to make is one yard for a touchdown. All you have to do is break the plane which means the front part of the goal line. Ten twenty four left Hawaii now has reestablished a 20 point lead. Forty one to twenty one that should read. Or excuse me, you missed the extra point. I'm sorry. 19 point lead. I stand corrected again. Here, give me a slap. Thank you. Let's go down to Mini Sugimoto. 
Thanks there, James. Um, in the first half, you mentioned how Coach Fitzhill was one of two Division I-A coaches with a doctoral degree. Well, I'll let you know that his wife is just a short distance away from earning a doctoral degree of her own, and she's quite excited. Uh, I'm being told that when folks call the house now and ask for Dr. Hill, it won't necessarily be for the coach any longer. Mrs. Hill is in the stands tonight with the couple's three children, ages 12, 8, and 4. That's a big report by... I said Mini, no, it's Mina, Mina Sugimoto. We mentioned that Fitzhill, one of only two coaches who has a doctorate degree. Yeah, the other one is, uh, the other fellow with a doctorate degree uh, is head coaching at Texas Tech, and I believe he has a Juris doctorate. He's an attorney. Yes, he is. Not returning it is Roussard. The other coach is Mike Leach of Texas Tech. He has a doctor of jurisprudence. And uh, Fitzhill has a doctor doctorate of education. That's lofty goals. That really is. 10-24 left. 19 point lead. 40 to 21. A lot of scoring again in this game. But San Jose State certainly not, not through, not with the potential that they have. Tyson Thompson, the single setback. Away with a four-man front. Put eight men in the box. Back to passes Rogers. Throws long over the middle. And nobody's there. Closest to it was Broussard. That time it appeared that Rogers was trying to throw to a spot. Rogers gets up. Rather uncertain. Dale Rogers came off the bench against Rice and threw for 359 yards and five touchdowns. You know, what I thought was interesting about him is he came from Chaffee College where he was a punter. He was a reserve quarterback there. He was the starting punter there. And now he's the starting quarterback at a Division I school. He is a multi-talented. Football player, second down and 10 from the 20. Pitch to the near side. This is Thompson, 30. Thompson run down from behind, loses his helmet. But all the way out to the 35-yard line, he's already, as we mentioned before, over 100 yards. Leonard Peters finally caught up to him. And San Jose along has with, had, uh, Along with Ray Bass. They've had some success with that option. And you see there, number 99, Louis Funga at the end of the play. Now you know you're giving terrific effort when you go from a defensive tackle 30 yards down the field and you're in on the tackle. That's the kind of stuff that gives you an A when you get graded on Monday. Ball was advanced out to the 37 yard line. Lance Martin and James T. Callier are in the I formation. Back to pass. Rogers steps out of the grasp, throws it to Lance Martin. Martin over the 45 to the 46 yard line. That was a scramble and an ad lib, but it ended up with positive yardage. And another Warrior player is down, and that's Akbon. Tony Akbon, and he's not moving his shoulder or his left arm. And this may be another bad sign for a much beleaguered. Defense for Hawaii. Very concerned, June Jones. Here you see the play. And uh, the finally, Martin is halted. But during the course of that play, Tony Akban, who is just a terrific story, coming from Nigeria, having never played football before, started at the University of Hawaii in basketball and then made the switch to football and the football team started to play at defensive end and because he never had experience he had to really have a very steep learning curve to overcome and Akbon injured here as now you see June Jones walking across to show his concern TJ Moy has gone to the locker room uh, say a pull melee has a suspected a broken arm out for the season, that kind of thing. I mean, it just 
keeps going on for this Hawaii defense. They have really suffered. Yeah. You know, Akban, he had to, like you said, he had to learn how to be a defensive end. And at first, he looked really awkward out there. And a lot of people were saying he was at least a year away, that this year would be another learning year for him. But he has really got, come on strong. He's got him and he's made terrific plays. He looks like he belongs out there. Akban, 6'6", 274 pounds. From the continent of Africa and the country of Nigeria. And one of the finest personalities you would ever want to see. You know, he really is, Jim. When you talk to him, he's so nice. He's big and he's so nice. And you talk to the coach, uh, his, his coach, Singletary, because that Akban is just a terrific, great guy. Always, always trying to get better. He's the kind of player that's first off the bus. Second down and two. Ball at the 45-yard line for San Jose State. Thompson, the single set ball. Thompson on the pitch. Thompson in trouble, giving ground. Thompson is ankle tackle. Boy, what a job by number 91, Ikaika Alama Francis, another ex-basketball player. An absolutely wonderful job. He comes upfield. He defends the quarterback, makes him pitch the ball to the running back. You'll see him come up the field here, see him defend the quarterback. The quarterback then has to pitch. He jumps outside, the running back can't get around him, makes him turn around and go the other way. Alama Francis, 6'6", 215, out of Kaneohe and Kalaheo High School. Loss on the play, back to the 41-yard line, third down and seven. Rodgers with time, rolling, directing traffic, now throws, and that may have been tipped or just thrown into the ground. It was not thrown well. James Jones was the intended receiver. Now we'll bring up fourth down. So Alama Francis, another one of those basketball players that is making the transition to football. And it is not easy. In fact, Alama Francis coming back from back surgery during the offseason. There you see Akpan being examined. It is fourth down for San Jose State, and they are going to call timeout. a timeout with eight minutes and 28 seconds left to play. In the game, Hawaii by 19. If you want to crush it off the tee, stick it on the ground. Or just be able to find it after you hit it. We're here to tell you, all you need is three. 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 Introducing the Three Club Tour, developed by ESPN Golf Schools, presented by Lexus. Register now and receive three clubs free. To find out more, log on to ESPNGolfSchools.com or call us. All students will have a chance to enter the Lexus Hole-in-One Challenge. Tee it up, knock it in. A Hole-in-One wins you a Lexus. What's the story? Hey, hey, Dan, sorry. Thought everybody left for the night. Can I get you an energy bar? How about some water? No, man, I'm okay. You good? Thanks. All right. Eight minutes and 28 seconds left in the game. San Jose State trailing away. 40 to 21 from the shotgun. Dale Rogers on fourth down. Throws. That's complete, and what a hit. That was complete to Jones. And coming up and really delivering the shot was Kamaka Viva Ole. Jones caught the ball and started to turn up field, and Kamaka Viva Ole just loomed up in front of him. Now this is one of the new looks that Hawaii's come up with because of their shortages on defense. Kamaka Viva Ole lines up out there in the flats. He drops back in the zone, comes up, and makes a terrific hit. He's, just, he's having a terrific game. So San Jose State does not convert on fourth down. They turn the ball over to Hawaii. 
Hawaii has it at the San Jose State 44 yard line. Brewster is back in with Tim Chang. Tim Chang now 23 of 36, 288 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Chang steps up, looking, looking long, throws for the end zone. A man is there. It is just overthrown, intended for Jason Rivers. Rivers has been close. Rivers just putting on the speed. And he was open. Yes, he was. And Josh Powell there got beat deep. Ball just a little overthrown. So Timmy Chang with eight minutes, 16 seconds left to play. He would like to go over 300 yards again uh, tonight. Because for Timmy Chang, that would be the 32nd time in his career that he has passed for over 300 yards. He is close, 288. Chang gives the ball to Brewster, trying to turn the corner. Brewster to the 41. Short game on the play from the 44. That'll bring up third down and seven. Kinji Green, 6'2, 275, the junior out of Livermore, California. Kinesiology major. Able to make the tackle. Number 69 for San Jose State. Third and seven for Hawaii. So Rivers and Owens. And Welsh to the left, Komine to the right. Komine at the 25, that's a first down. Bobby Gudinez covering on the play, 17 yard gain. That should put, that should put Chang over the 300 yard mark in this game. What a throw. And an excellent catch by Comine. So he's done it again. This is the 32nd 300 yard gain in his career for Tim Chang. He has 305 yards. And he's getting ever closer to that all time pass yardage record held by Detmer. Well, it's given up the middle to Brewster. Bounces outside at the 20. What a move. 15. And it's finally corralled at about the 13 yard line and the crowd will applaud the effort. 13th carry of the game for Brewster. Goodenes and Josh Powell chased him all the way across the field. Eric Wilson also helped out. But what a move right there. Then he gets to the outside and he wants to make some more moves but he kind of runs out of room and the white shirts finally corral him. Ball is advanced to the 13 yard line. Brewster 13 carries 42 yards now in the game. So Hawaii knocking on the door again. Triple wide receiver to the right. Chang looking throws into the end zone. Touchdown. Komine. Ninety fourth touchdown of his career. The 15th of the season. This is just a nice job again of Timmy Chang being on the same page with his receivers and and like I said San Jose is having real problems the safeties aren't coming over to help the corner when the receiver breaks inside the safeties aren't coming over fast enough to help the corner cover the receiver coming at nine catches 159 yards and two touchdowns. So Tim Chang now with 318 yards. Ayat will try to make an extra point. And he kicks it, and it's not good again. Boy, Ayat just just goes into those into those areas where he does not make the extra point. And I think very seriously now, I had my suspicions, but very seriously now, I think it's the Umberto Specialis. Let's go down to Minna on the sideline. Well, if you noticed on that last uh, play there, Tony Akpon, number 90, had gone back into the game. When he was out here on the sidelines, uh, the team doctors worked on his shoulder. His left shoulder was uh, tweaked on that one particular play, but apparently he's okay enough to return to this ball game. Showing the durability of Tony Akpon. Hawaii, 44 yards in five plays, one minute and 58 seconds of elapsed time. 
Tim Chang to Komine. 13 yard touchdown pass. Tim Chang now in his career 94 touchdown passes and 15 for this season. Opposed by three interceptions, two in this game, but he has thrown for 318 yards. So right now he is 241 yards below Ty Detmer for the all time yardage list. There you see Pomele. And he, with the uh, against the broken arm, he could be finished for the season. Boy, what else can happen as far as injuries are concerned? Tristan George and John Broussard are deep. It is 46 to 21. How are you leading? With 6:24 left to play in the game, boy, well on their way now to their third victory of the season. There's the kick by Ayat. It is deep and it will not be returned as it goes out of the end zone. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the loyalty award by donating $100 toward the Central Pacific Bank endowed scholarship fund for every touchdown Hawaii scores so far tonight. Warriors have scored six touchdowns, so Central Pacific Bank will have to dig deep. We may have a new quarterback in the game for San Jose State. And it's number 17, Adam Tafralis. 6'1, 219 pound redshirt freshman out of uh, San Mateo, California, Mills High School in the Bay Area. And we have a penalty flag. Could be a false start. And it could be a Matt Cantu, the center. Tafralis. False start, offense number 72, five yard penalty, still first down. Tafrolos has not uh, really been there statistically coming into this game. He's been used very sparingly, but he will get uh, his baptism uh, tonight, no doubt about that. First down and 15 from the 15 yard line. Big hole and running right up the middle, and he may score. With it is Thompson. They're not going to catch him. 85 yard touchdown run by Tyson Thompson. That is what San Jose State was trying to do all game long. Yeah, and it worked. I they're going to regret, they're going to look at the films of this game if they lose. And they're going to regret that they, they tried any of that fancy stuff because the running game has been there for them all night. And on that play, you had two offensive linemen, two of the converted offensive linemen were at defensive tackle there, uh, Michael LaFaele and Larry Sawafea. So it shows the, the lack of depth Hawaii has at that defensive front. Thompson, 23 carries, 203 yards. And a touchdown, an electrifying run, 85 yards. Kicking the point after will be Carr. And it is now 46 to 28 with six minutes and 12 seconds left. Look at how fast Thompson appears in the secondary, and there's nobody around him. He's gone. And there's Ray Bass, and Ray Bass runs a 4 3, and he could not catch Thompson. So Thompson, he's got a lot of speed, you know, out of high school. He was recruited out of, out of Texas. He was recruited by Florida, Nebraska, Arkansas, TCU. He had to go the junior college route and find himself at TCU. But he's a terrific player. Let me tell you, he's running deep into the game. He's running with six minutes left in the fourth quarter. And he is sprinting like Mercury. Has little wings on his shoes. There's the shoes again. 85-yard touchdown run. What a run by Tyson Thompson from Irvine, Texas, and Garden City College. He has now three 100-yard games and one 200-yard game with 6-12 left. And Fritz Hill can only say, gee, I wonder if we didn't do that earlier, if we just kept running him and running him. Thompson really 
amazing because he he probed it he probed into that secondary so quickly that Hawaii just could not adjust I mean he just blew by everybody. Yeah he hit the hole at full speed and nothing got in his way he didn't have to break stride or cut or anything he was gone and then the defenders backing up have to turn their hips and then start running after him and he just couldn't catch up. So let's see if uh, San Jose State tries another short kickoff here. Hawaii has uh, their hands team in there. Here's Jeff Carr. San Jose State really needs to get possession here. But they kick off deep, backing up as Ferguson. He will take it on the goal line. He had a 66 yard return earlier. Ferguson hits short of the 20. Fumbles the ball, tries to get it back, I believe he did, at about the 16. Trey Jackson, 5'9", sophomore from Los Angeles and Los Angeles Southwest College and Brigham Young and Thomas Jefferson High School made the tackle. 6.03 left. That's enough time if San Jose State can get their hands on the ball to make it interesting. So we'll see the quarterback situation now for Hawaii and Thatcher Satcher comes back in for Hawaii Brandon Satcher the South Carolinian hands the ball off to Kali'i Kipi Kali'i Kipi still on his feet finally they ankle tackle him as he goes from the 19 to the 21 Hawaii wants to eat some clock Eric Wilson Finally brought down the big guy. Michael Brewster has gone into the game now for Hawaii. Hawaii will be on the road next week at Boise State. Five thirty-three left on the clock. Inexorably ticking down. Satcher running. Good move by Satra out over the 30. That's enough for a first down. So with uh, Tim Chang at 241 yards, I mean, think about it. The coaching staff wants him to break it on at least regional television, which would be ESPN. And that will probably occur next week because ESPN will then replay it on SportsCenter all week long. At least uh, June Jones is thinking that. That's the way coaches think now, especially when you're near a big record like that. 453 left. Ball is given to Brewster. Brewster to the 36. Excellent run by Brewster. Excellent run by Brewster. And a nice job. This is the second string offensive line for Hawaii in there. You got Uperes at left tackle. Uh, Moino moves down to center. Inferrera, Kaunohi. They're all in there and they're still able to run the ball effectively on San Jose. We talked about how light their defensive line is. So Hawaii doing, doing a good job and it's smart because the running will then eat up the clock. 421 and ticking. There you see Mike Cavanaugh. Mike Cavanaugh responsible for the play of that offensive line. And that is the big asset for Hawaii this year. Satcher to Brewster we may have a false start. When you have the second unit in there. Before the ball was snapped, ball start, offense number 72, five yard penalty, still second down. Dane Uperesa. You know, it seems to happen a lot. 6'5, 6'5, 325. He's a big he, boy. You just get finished talking about him and, and saying something nice about him and they jump off sides. He's out of Haula. You are familiar with Haula. Haula Ne. And he went to uh, Punahou. That's right. Terrific athlete. He, he won a dunking contest for this team, which includes two basketball players. <laughs> Second down and nine. The ball at the 31, 344 in ticket. Satcher. Brewster in trouble. Oh, they eat him up back inside the 25 yard line to the 23. That is not going to 
please Coach Kavanaugh at all standing on the sidelines. Ezekiel Staples, who has played another stellar game for San Jose State. You know, but it's a good experience for this offensive line because what, what is hard for an off, a young offensive lineman to learn is how to pick up the blitz because the defensive linemen are right in front of you. You can see them. You know whether you got to block them or not. But Ezekiel Staples comes in on a blitz from his linebacker position. When they watch it on film, that young lineman is going to look at that and say, yeah, that's my bad, my mistake. I got to pick that up next time. Satchel remains in at quarterback out of the shotgun. Brewster back there with him. Satcher, we may have another full start or delay. Before the ball was snapped, delay of game, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. So it was third and 15. It will now be third and 20 with 2.58 left to play. See if Satcher's going to throw the ball here. It would be his first attempt. Boy, overloads the left side with three wide receivers. Satcher, the freshman. Shovel pass. Possibilities with Brewster for the first down. He has it. Still on his feet, runs into his own offensive lineman. He may have broken that. Ran into Phil Kaufman. What a call. That was an excellent call by the Hawaii coaching staff on that shovel pass to Brewster because Brewster gets it quickly and then all of a sudden he has his teammates in front of him. And he still is on his feet following. You see the contact with Kaufman following the contact with the opposition. And you're right, a terrific call because even if he didn't get the first down, you're taking time off the clock and you can punt it away. You don't risk an interception with the pass. It's a nice call by Hawaii. First down at the 44-yard line. Ball is kept by Satcher after the fake handoff to Brewster. Satcher not throwing the ball. And he advances it from the 44 to the 47. You know, it... San Jose State off of a bye week has not won a road game since 1993 and the way things are going it does not Time look out. like they're going to San Jose State Third does not look like they're going to break that streak tonight 206 left in the game Hawaii on their way to a 3 and 3 record OTC guys, one pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. How's that work? Sign the frequent heartburn guy next to you. Whoa, here's how. It's the only OTC that directly shuts down lots of those acid producing pumps in your stomach. That's why it's the only OTC that can work for 24 hours with one pill a day. Awesome. Prilosec OTC, one, one pill a day, 24, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Hey Leroy. We're getting the league back together. Yeah! Play Fantasy Football League Manager on ESPN.com. Get the league back together. Knights Bank of Hawaii, most valuable players for San Jose State. Tyson Thompson. Tyson Thompson, 23 carries, 203 yards, and a touchdown, including a 70-plus run for the score. And for Hawaii, Britton Komine, nine catches, 159 yards, and two touchdowns. Bank of Hawaii salutes these two very deserving players. Second down and six. In motion is Owens. Will Satcher throw a pass? He keeps it again. Same play. He has the first down. Well, 
He may not have to now. There's two minutes left. They'll move the chains and start the clock again. But what a way to eat up the clock. And we have another. This cannot be happening. We have another Hawaii player down. They help him up. It's an offensive lineman. And it's Dean Uparesa. So he'll have to hobble off. Well, Dane's jogging off, so maybe Jonathan something not that, you know, not that major. Jonathan Ekno will come in to replace Uparesa. Under two minutes left, Hawaii in no hurry, and they are slowly but surely sealing this victory. First down from the 44 of San Jose State. Ball is fumbled by Satcher. Picked up by Brewster. Brewster to the 40. That was amazing. Demonte Cox finally pulled him down. These are the wax standings. Boise State continues undefeated. Longest winning streak in the nation. They are now 7-0. Hawaii in the WAC is three and two, three and three on the year, and they will play Boise State next week. You see San Jose State one and two in the conference, and they will fall to two and four following this game as less than a minute to play. So Hawaii has the ball now at the 39-yard line of San Jose State. Satcher gives it to Brewster. Brewster, no, excuse me, a new uh, runner has come into the game, and that is Kala Latuselu. So Kala Latuselu carrying for the first time. Latuselu, that's the first time that he has carried the ball uh, this season. Last season, he had five carries for 13 yards, and that was uh, in the game against Army. So he's from Laie and Kahuku, 19 seconds left. All Hawaii has to do is snap the ball, and this game is over and a successful homecoming. Hawaii defeats. San Jose State by a score of 46 to 28. Red Star Moment now, sponsored by Heineken. It's all about the beer Heineken. You see the two uh, coaches embrace following this game. This is the Red Star Moment. This is just another great punt return by Chad Owen. Third time this year that he has been able to return a punt. That was a 71 yarder. Be sure to join us in two weeks when the University of Hawaii returns to Aloha Stadium for another big Western Athletic Conference matchup, this time against the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. Ah, you know, Mark Twain said, East is East and West is West, and never the twain shall meet. He didn't know about Louisiana Tech farthest in the east in the conference against Hawaii farthest in the west until then this is Jim Leahy saying good night and aloha from Aloha Stadium I'd like to thank of course Mina Sugimoto and also Doug Violetti and our crew here at Aloha Stadium this has been a presentation of the Warrior Football Network and K5 the home team Malama Pono Kekahi Ikekahi Heavy favorites, which meant nothing once they stepped between the lines. The threat of a total eclipse of Sunshine State teams, including the Canes, who brought their perfect record into the teeth of the Wolfpack. Purdue trying to bounce back from heartache, unsympathetic Michigan delivered a headache. Things can get a little squirrely around here, so bring your feet. College game day final, now.
College Game Day Final is presented by Pontiac. Saw the squirrel. Anybody have any idea where we might find a few nuts? Maybe. You don't just go catch a squirrel. Not, just, not if you're a cheerleader. You get the megaphone and try to get over the top. Glad to have you with us here on College Game Day Final. Reese Davis along with my good friends and partners, Trev Alberts and Mark May. Sunshine State, guys, known for the bright rays of sunshine, but a cloud had followed Ron Zook around. It had been Steve Spurrier. But the Zooker had an opportunity to do something that the old ball coach was never able to do. Win a game, Scott Field and Starkville. Mississippi State and Florida. Sly Croom's team playing strong. Third quarter's tied at 17. Jonathan Lowe returning the punt. From the start for Florida, look at the lack of effort. Guys just walking around, jogging, chanting Crowder. Nobody really going after return. That was a story for Florida, Reese. Lack of effort all day. That was their first punt return for a touchdown since 1998. You see what happens at the end of this play. The official, Bob Hicks, clipped by Chad Jackson. He had to be carted off, did not return. It's 31-24 state in the fourth. Chris Leak dancing in. The Gators trying to save themselves. Now it's 31 all. Dogs going for it. Fourth and four from the 36. Omar Connor back in action after missing a couple of games with a sprained knee. So the Gators take over. Leak trying to win it. Oh, right to Jeremy Johnson. And all of a sudden, Zook and Starkville. Feeling it starting to slip away. Mississippi State on the move late. They catch him in the blitz. Norwood down to the 20, to the 15. Darius Norwood. Touchdown, Mississippi State with 33 seconds left. Can you believe it? Very difficult to believe, and who knew that they should have invested in those collapsible goalposts there <laughs> in Mississippi <laughs> State? Take any down in their near future. Well, they got them down, got one of them down. Mississippi State, after losing nine straight games to SEC opponents, all of them by at least 18 points, they snap that streak, and they get a real cornerstone victory for Sylvester Croom. Talk about what this win means for you. It's the greatest win of my life. But I've been a lot of big games. Nobody knows how much adversity we've been through and how far these kids have come all year. They had to quit on us. Some of them have left. But I told them, I said, if they stayed and paid the price, we would have days like this. This is just the beginning for Mississippi State. Mm. It was a great day and a great win for Sylvester Croom. Quite the opposite for Ron Zook. And we're going to talk about the impact on Zook, his future at Florida during our roundtable segment a little bit later on in college game day final. But let's expound a little bit on what Coach Croom was talking about. Since the season opening win at Tulane, dogs have been awful, but they came to play after an open day today. Well, what Coach Croom is talking about, guys, is the big picture plan. Obviously, every coach coming in has the big picture plan where he wants to take this team. But part of the big picture plan is you have to see progress. As a player, you can buy into a plan. You know there's going to be ups and downs, but if you see progress as a player, you can believe in it. You can believe in the extra work if you know that there are going to be days like this when you knock off a team like Florida down the road, Mark. Now and these players, when they go through their highs and lows, they know that down the road, if they keep paying that price, there's a, something waiting for them, like beating a team like Florida again. This is huge for Mississippi State. Well, this is part of the process of building a foundation for this university. He basically tore it straight down to the bottom, and now he's building it back up. He's got enthusiasm about the program now. And I think what's key in the big picture scenario is this is going to help recruiting. A lot of those players that were on the fence about going to Mississippi State are going to sit back and look at this program a little closer now because now they've got that victory in the the SEC. They defeated a big-time opponent. They can build on from here, and a lot of those young recruits are going to take notice of this victory. They were last in the nation in scoring. They were averaging 12 points a game. Last in the nation, and they dropped 38 on Florida. Oh. It is Zook's third loss to an unranked opponent in his first three seasons. Steve Spurrier's first three seasons, he didn't have any. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in college game day final. Well, Florida State also with a challenge going on the road to Wake Forest. Wyatt Sexton said he sensed a lack of urgency among his teammates early in the week. Oh, Wyatt leading Seminoles out against the Demon Deacons. And Wyatt contributed to the Seminoles' woes early. The pick six by Matt Robinson. Wake Forest. Didn't have an ACC win yet, but it played every game top with a 7-0 lead. Now it's a 14-10 Wake lead in the fourth, and here is Sexton. You know, the coaches say the greatest thing about him never gets wrapped. It's Dominic Robinson threw for a buck 94, and then Wake, the final desperation heave, Corey Randolph picked off by Antonio Cromartie. Only turnover of the game for the Demon Deacons, but... 
the Seminoles escape from Grove Stadium. 20 to 17, the final there. Wyatt Sexton Fornos is taking over as a starter. He just seems to find a way to win. Florida State escaped. The other team from the Sunshine State, Miami on the road at North Carolina State. You, just about everything you could possibly see in a football game. You saw in the first half of this game. Mayday, you think Chuck Amato should have kicked the ball to Devin Hester? No. I mean, kick off. No, the first kickoff. He said he told us when we talked about you're not going to kick it to Devin Hester. So what do they do? They kick it to Devin Hester five yards deep. What's he do? He takes it out, takes it all the way. They have the momentum the first play of the game. You know, that might have been part of the problem. You think you kick it five yards deep, he might not bring it out. You see Jay Davis. This is after North Carolina State scores. They, they come with the onside kick. Now, we're still in the first half of this game, and we're seeing all of this stuff that set up a field goal. And, Fourth and nine for Miami and Brian Monroe, and he gets a punt deflected, blocked by Manny Lawson. Look, we're still in the first quarter, guys. It's 14-10. We've seen the onside kick, the kickoff return, the block punt, and now T.A. McClendon appears to be running down close to the goal line. Fumble for the touchback. Now, this is what hurt NC State the whole game. They had a great job offensively. Got a lot of yards in this game, but four turnovers at key times really cost them in this game. And still in the first quarter, wait, there's more. Brock Berlin with a rare error on the night. Picked off by Troy Graham, a kid from Miami Central High School. Like nearly 30 kids on the NC State roster from Florida. And then 14-10, still early in the second quarter. Here goes big T.A. McClendon, 25 yards. And it's set up Jay Davis, who really played well to Tremaine Hall, who's from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Florida kids scoring, and now Miami getting in on the action with a fake punt. Quadrine Hill taking the direct snap. That would set up Berlin to Sonoris Moss, made a Nice job by Brock Berlin forcing the pass there, but Sonoris Moss taking it into the end zone with three defenders on his back. And Brock Berlin, once they got a little run going, a little play action fake there, and you get the safeties up. Nice pass. Roscoe Parrish there, 28-17 at that point. And then to Lance Leggett for a touchdown. Berlin threw five touchdown passes that tied the school record last set by Ken Dorsey. 45-31 to 31 the final. Hester's return, his fourth return for a touchdown this year. Miami has six non-offensive touchdowns that leads the nation. So Miami goes into a hostile environment, the Wolfpack ready. But Trev, as you mentioned during the game, perhaps a little bit too tight, caused some of the early errors that kept NC State from staying close to Miami in the early going. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet were in Carter Family Stadium to observe. Well, thanks, Reese. Obviously, three very different fortunes for the three state of Florida teams on the road today. We'll get to the Canes and the Knowles in a second. But as for the Florida Gators, you know, it's not just how many games you lose. It's to whom you lose, where you lose, and how you lose. And the Gators continue to lose games because of lack of discipline. In this case, on defense, a, a shocking, shocking letdown against the lowest scoring team in the country. There's no question about that. You know, Mississippi State beating Florida. Well, they've done it before once when old Steve Spurrier was there. But let me tell you something. They scored 38 points against the Gators. And that 38 points is more than the three previous SEC games combined. That that's worth a yo. The frustrating thing is Chris Leak played well. The offense put points on the board. It was the Florida Gator defense that didn't show up for this game. I don't know if they're looking ahead to Georgia, looking ahead to another game, but they were not at Scott Field on this particular football game. The most frustrating thing, I think, for the Florida Gator fans has to be the lack of discipline that we've seen throughout this entire year from the Gators. The problems off the field, the problems against Tennessee, the problems against LSU again today. Lack of focus, lack of discipline is a major issue, and for all the criticism that we've heard for Ron Zook, I think this will be the toughest thing for him to overcome. Well, there's some bigger problems ahead or chances for redemption if you can somehow beat Georgia and Florida State. Exactly. But that seems unlikely the way they're playing. Yeah, but Maybe it know. will be a wake-up call. Meanwhile, the Canes and Knowles out here on Tobacco Road handled their business very differently on this day. The Knowles messed around, got in a deep hole with Sexton struggling, had to bail themselves out late. And Miami yeah. came in here. You talk about an ornery, <laughs> focused, determined team determined to avoid any kind of you know adventure like they had against Louisville this was a this was an emphatic performance and I picked North Carolina State yes, I didn't mention I, it, I, did. no, I, I, yeah. I thought this environment would kill him <laughs> Kirk was right it juiced him up and the thing I learned about Miami today I tell you what if you give them a break they stick the dagger in you boy they are really competitive when it comes to that I don't see anybody beating Miami 
I really don't. Yeah. I don't think anybody else that, that they play could beat them. I see them undefeated into the bowl. Games. I agree. You know what's exciting if you're a Miami Hurricane fan is this is a young team. And that's why Lee and I think others thought, let's see how they respond when they get on the road. Yeah. See how Brock Berlin responds when he gets into a hostile environment. They pass the test. This will do nothing but bring this team even closer together. You look down the road. You look at their schedule. The only team that can beat Miami is Miami. And I don't think anybody sees that happening. Put the Canes down there as a team that's going to finish undefeated at the end of the season and here comes the BCS craziness to, as we get closer and closer to December. You were saying Virginia not a real chance they're not tough enough that'll be one to watch in Charlottesville they get the Hokies obviously no. at home at the end of the year and the Knowles Wyatt Sexton least had a chance to redeem himself because he reverted back to uh, several levels in the first half of that game against Wake State Forest. Wake Forest has given Florida State troubles when I played in the early 50s. <laughs> I mean, it's a situation where Wake Forest, the Florida State guys don't respect them, and all of a sudden they get behind, all of a sudden they got to catch them. It happens every year. Happened again this year. And we see it all over college uh, every, football. When teams don't respect yeah. their opponent, it's the parody and the teams and the talent that we see Indeed. throughout the country and leaves right with Florida State, and it just happens to be Wake Forest, Forest. no matter where the game is played, especially when it's uh, on the road for Florida State. But they, they did fight back. They were down. They fought back, came together as a group. It's, again, one of those wins you'll look back at at the end yeah. of the season and say, we're very lucky we were able to get out of there with a the win. Yep. Survive and advance for the Seminoles. Canes dominant. Gators digging themselves a deeper, deeper hole. Let's go back to Reese, Trevor, and Mark. More highlights now. All right, Chris, we'll visit with you guys in a little while. In the Big Ten, Purdue, after the heartbreaking loss against Wisconsin, Kyle Orton's late fumble costing the Boilermakers that game. No time to mourn over that loss. They had Michigan coming in. They had fared well against the Wolverines, just one and four since Joe Tiller had been there. And there is still Heisman Trophy candidate and Kyle Orton finding Ray Williams, who just gets it's plowed by Marlon Jackson. Story of the day, guys, was the Michigan defensive backs making huge tackles every time a ball was completed. And he gets Brandon Jones this time, wheeling out of there for 63 yards. Purdue with its first lead of the game at 14-10. But the freshman running back, Mark Michael Hart, another huge day. I love the way that they set the screen up. It's just a little dump screen, but look at the move here, the determination to find his way to reach into the end zone and score for Michigan. And once again here, guys, here's Michael Hart. Look at the vision. Good blocking up front, but get outside, get down the sideline. Again, good blocking down the sideline, 30 yards down the sideline for Michael Hart. But wait, there's more. Watch Hart shedding Boilermakers as if he's, you know, somehow all slicked up or something. He lost his footing there. He might have gained more yards. It's only the second Michigan player in history with two straight 200-yard rushing games. But Garrett Rivas gets his field goal attempt blocked. This has been a problem for Michigan for much of the year. Just over three minutes to go. Rivas, another opportunity from about the same spot. And this time he's true. And Lloyd Carr's team is up by two. Now Orton, similar situation, although this time he's down. Finds Dorian Bryant. And Bryant finds Ernest Shazor. Leon Hall recovers. Michigan came in. That is a big time lick. Michigan came into the game leading the nation in takeaways. And again, it's a takeaway that seals the fate of Purdue and pulls the game out for Michigan. Wolverine, strong effort to win this game. In both freshmen, Chad Henney over 200 yards again, but Michael Hart, another 200 yard game. It's unbelievable the way that both of these freshmen are leading the Michigan Wolverines. Now let's talk about the way the secondary played Taylor Stubblefield, Big Ten's all-time leading receiver, shut out until the final possession. He had one catch for 10 yards. Still to come on College Game Day Final, the Magnificent Seven. The unbeaten's coming in. Number one USC trying to take care of business against the hapless Huskies. It wasn't all about Adrian Peterson. He might be your leading high school candidate, but guess who showed up for the Sooners? And guess who showed up for the Utes? Well, just about everybody on the roster seemed to find their way into the end zone for the urban myths. Back on College Game Day Final presented by Pontiac. Seven teams started the day unbeaten. Number one team in the land, number one team in the BCS. USC Trojans taking on Washington. Pete Carroll and the men of Troy for their 19th straight home victory. Matt Leinert looking for the president. Elected. Reggie Bush's sixth receiving touchdown of the year. Getting things started for SC. And Matt Leonard each week finds a new option to go to. This time he's going to find Jason Mitchell. Look at the protection by the offensive line. Wide open behind the defensive back. It's 24-0 Trojans. 
Liner 24-43 for 217 on the day, but it was the Trojan defense that was absolutely stifling, Trevor. Great job getting the fumble here. Is this the only question people wanted to know about USC right now? I mean, through the season or offense, no question. Again, another fumble there. Keith Riffers here getting a Youngster. nice interception there, taking off a deflection. That was a story. USC's defense now stepping up, matching the production of their offense. Washington only had six first downs and 113 yards all day, and now they're going deep into the bench, and Desmond Reed, freshman's first career touchdown. Boy, Pete Carroll just keeps running guys in there. Get a big lead. Let's run another freshman in there. He's a stud, too. 38 to nothing. SC rolls over Washington. First time the Huskies have been shut out since 1981. Oklahoma taking on Kansas. Bob Stoops across the field from his buddy Mark Mangino and his former assistant, Jason White. Up top to Travis Wilson. White threw for 265 in the first half because Kansas was geared up to stop Adrian Peterson. And White just kept the boot to the throat looking for Brandon Jones this time. Brandon Jones here, guys. If you're going to play man, actually a safety there. Get him over the top right there. You get the passing game going. What does that do? Early in this game, Adrian Peterson didn't do anything. It couldn't get the running game going. You get the passing game going. Then all of a sudden, you can open this right here. The power down by the goal line. Adrian Peterson in for the touchdown. That is his seventh touchdown of the year. Fourth quarter, Oklahoma driving. Peterson with a routine four-yard carry that's anything but routine. He had 1,000 yards yards for the season busted a hundred in every game this year we'll tell you the significance of that in just a minute here is white again with his fourth touchdown pass of the game white second straight fourth touchdown game first 300 yard game of the season 41 10 oklahoma stuck a touchdown in late in this game and stoops has said because of the bcs system now you want to make sure that the pollsters are impressed Peterson, meanwhile, becomes the third player in 1A history to rush for 1,000 yards in the first seven games of his freshman season. That is pretty good company he's keeping there with Marshall Falk and Emmett Smith. Auburn, a very similar score to what Oklahoma put up, 42-10. Cadillac went for a buck 49. Jason Campbell, very efficient. Tigers at Ole Miss on ESPN next week. Another of the unbeaten teams, Wisconsin, Rasmus James, hurt in the Purdue game, not playing against Northwestern. Brett Bazinet finds the wide open Dante Sanders, but he's a badger. So Wisconsin now has the ball. Third and four, John Stocko. Owen! Owen! Owen doesn't have any friends! <laughs> he's got one. John Stocko throws it to Owen Daniels. 10 0. Wisconsin, and then Anthony Davis on the ground made it. And look at the power right here. Bernstein getting the block. They just pushed around Northwestern's defensive front the entire day. Here again on the goal line. The big offensive lineup for Wisconsin just pushing them in. Another score for Anthony Davis. What a difference. Wisconsin's defense from last year. Totally Unbelievably different. different. The performance they have up front, the way they stopped the run. You got to remember, Northwestern had a nice offense going into this game. To hold Bazinet to 185 yards, did a nice job. Number two total defense coming into the week. I would wager they might be number one next week after this performance and what happened to NC State. Utah and UNLV. This is the opening kickoff of the game. Bo Nagahi, oops. UNLV is now calling. Little help! Morgan Scally, officially 100 yards. Will you please move? We paid good money for that camera position. Utes with a 7-0 lead. Utah then blocked UNLV's first punt, scored a touchdown in their first play from scrimmage, then run one play and we're up 14-0. Continue to pour it on at 21-7. Who's got contained? Not anyone on Alex Smith, apparently. Alex Smith avoiding defenders. It, you know, it was as if somehow Alex Smith were contagious or something. Didn't want to touch him. Hey, 70 yards for the junior quarterback, and Urban Meyer took a knee on about the two-yard line at the end of the game. He could have put 70 on John Robinson, but did not do so. Utah's won 11 in a row. They've scored 40, fifth time in seven games. Fresno State and Boise State on the blue rug. Boise State trying to remain perfect, working on the nation's longest winning streak, 17 coming in. And Jared Zabransky to T.J. Acri. That would set up Calvin McCarty, who would take it in, give the Broncos a 7-0 lead. And also, the nation's longest home winning streak coming in at 22 in a row. You see Jabranski right here then would take advantage. A little trickeration coming back off the turnover in a 16-3 game after Pinnegar was intercepted. And Jabranski finds Sherm Blauser for 
The big gainer, and then Zabranski's going to keep it himself. Boise State and what was a wet, snowy, Boise type of night up there working on Fresno State who had designs on putting an end to the nation's longest winning streak. Boise State continuing to play good football. All right, so the unbeaten teams certainly have plenty of work ahead of them cut out, and anything can happen when you get into the championship stretch run of November. But thus far, among the teams that are unbeaten at the moment, who's been the most impressive to you? The most impressive team, I think, so far has been Auburn. I think the fact that they started the preseason ranked 17th really hurts them in terms of where they're positioned at right now. When you consider the teams they've played and how they've played the game, I think Auburn sitting at 8-0, they haven't had that game where they had to struggle to come from behind. USC in their six games, three of those games, their first six games, three of those games, they really struggled in that game. And then Miami, you saw Miami tonight. There's nobody's going to be Miami. I mean, Miami plays at Virginia. Miami will be undefeated. I think Auburn's got a great chance. They just have a difficult schedule. Those two impressed me the most. And I think the team you left out, Oklahoma. Let's not forget they still have the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Jason White. No one wants hey, to talk about him. Yeah, this year yeah Adrian freshman. Peterson. But, yeah. you know, this is a team that's really starting to come together. You look at the way that if they put Aitman in the box to stop Adrian Peterson, Jason White's back there. He can throw the ball around the field to Mark Clayton, make big plays downfield, and now the offense is finally coming alive in the passing game. Over 200 yards in the first half in this game. So if you try to stop one, pick your poison because the other one's ready to beat you. And if you look at this offense right now, they're hitting on all cylinders. I think each and every week they get a little bit better a little bit better and they're coming to the top at the right time towards the end of the season defense looked a little saltier in the game against Kansas too. Kansas State moved the ball on them yeah. except for one bust or one gamble that went awry and a long touchdown pass for the Jayhawks they didn't get much of anything against that Sooner defense on Saturday afternoon Oklahoma's been in the polls for quite some time and some new faces making their way into the rankings including Notre Dame Unbelievable that Boston College has had the fighting Irish's number. We'll see if they still do. And getting ranked hasn't always been a good thing for Texas Tech. We'll tell you why and what happened against the Hornets. Back on College Game Day Final, presented by Pontiac. And this Saturday, the fourth Saturday in October, rife with storylines, including one unfolding in Starkville as Sylvester Kroom gets his first SEC win for Mississippi State against Florida. Snaps a nine-game SEC losing streak for the Dogs. Adrian Peterson bust 1,000 yards, just the third freshman to bust 1,000 in his first seven games. Mike Hart of Michigan, his second straight 200-yard game. Wolverines have found themselves a freshman running back. Michigan and Wisconsin still undefeated in the Big Ten. They will not play this season. Wisconsin holds the tiebreaker. SC, Oklahoma, Miami, Auburn all atop the pole, all rolling and rolling big. You guys follow us in college football on Saturday. You know that I am firmly against going for two until the fourth quarter when you need it. So it's okay to go for two now. We got Mark and Trev over there. Guys, I want to know your biggest surprise, your biggest disappointment on the day. Trev, let's start with you with your biggest surprise. Actually, Reese and Mark, my biggest surprise is a team that lost. I mean, I think it's Alabama, a team that lost to Tennessee 17-13. to But once again, even with questionable quarterback play, a dominating defensive performance, holding Tennessee's offense to 195 yards and one offensive touchdown. I think Alabama's effort overall, especially defensively, was a surprise to me. Well, my biggest surprise is very simple. It's very easy. It's the biggest shocker of the day. It's Mississippi State over Florida, a huge underdog, even at home. Sylvester Kroom got his troops rallied up. They upset Florida 38 to 31. Impossible? No. Incredible? Yes. But a wonderful job by his bunch getting ready to play at home, surprising Florida, and taking it to Ron Zook and the Gators. Hats off to Sylvester Kroom. That's my biggest surprise of the day. And this is an easy transition. My biggest disappointment obviously has to be Florida. I mean, great win for Sly Kroom, but defensively, Florida's defense lethargic from the start. No effort. Guys taking improper angles. Undisciplined play on defense. A huge disappointment. May have cost Ron Zook his job. I can't imagine that Ron Zook will be the head coach at Florida after this loss. Huge disappointment. The effort of Florida's team. My biggest disappointment Chuck Amato, what are you thinking, Chuck? How can you kick the ball to Devin Hester? Didn't you watch him play against Louisville last week? Didn't you watch his returns last week against Louisville? The first kickoff of the game, Chuck, the first one. You kick it deep. You don't think that this man that runs a 4-2-40 is not going to take a chance of running it out of the end zone? The first play of the game, he takes it back, takes the momentum. They've got it all. Chuck, 
What are you thinking? We spoke to you the other night. You told us you weren't going to kick it to Devin Hester, but you had to tempt fate. My biggest hey, disappointment of the day. You better watch out. Don't chuck and bench all of us combined. <laughs> well, let me man. tell you something. He pounded the thing five yards deep in the end zone. He didn't think Hester was going to run it out of there, you know? 4 2 5 40. That's all I got to say. Hey, guess what I got in my hands? Oh, yeah. Well, BCS projections. Oh, second very nice. one. Mm. Second week of the BCS projections. He's brought to you by Allstate. Brad Edwards, our BCS guru, assuring us that USC will still be on top at Miami, perhaps somewhat surprisingly will be ahead of Oklahoma. Auburn sitting there in fourth, Florida State and Wisconsin will round out the top six. All right, now, what do you think? Let's look at this. If this is the way it shakes out, I know that during this weekend, you've come to the belief that Auburn should be number one in the polls. Again, guys, I think that Auburn should be number one in the polls based on their body of work for the whole season, who they've played. It's be the reason why they're number four in the BCS rankings is because where they started. They haven't gotten high enough in both polls, and obviously two-thirds of the BCS is the coaches' poll mm -hmm. and, of course, the AP poll. What do you think, Mark? Well, I think that uh, Utah's not up there anymore, and I think that <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's the schedule. It's a respect the strength of schedule, but I still like USC number one. I think right now they just have an on-off switch with Pete Carroll with his football team. If they're behind by halftime, flick it goes on, and they just rev it up, and they come out, and they just beat you in the second half. Here's the thing to watch from the standpoint of Utah. Utah's still unbeaten, but now some of the one-loss teams. You wonder where Michigan mm -hmm. will be ranked in relation to mm -hmm. Utah. Well, some of the pollsters start to move the Wolverines ahead of the Utes as they finish their schedule, which is not necessarily the strongest down the stretch, could potentially hurt Utah's opportunity to make it into the And BCS. I told you there's going to be five undefeated teams. We'll keep so it on, not right? even on that list. Hey, let's hand out some helmet stickers. Maybe get First started. one goes to the Tennessee Volunteer safety. Jason Allen. Jason Allen, 15 tackles, 10 solo tackles in the victory over Alabama. Former Muscle Shoals Trojan, by the way. Okay. How about David Pollock, guys? I got to go all defense here. Another huge strip. What is it with David Pollock and stripping quarterbacks, stripping Mac Jones, holding Arkansas to under 300 yards of total offense? Well, we're going to stay in the SEC then. I'm going to go Mississippi State and Jarius Norwood, the running back with 174 yards, the game-winning touchdown, and the dogs upset of Florida. I'm getting a little Pac-10 love. Andrew Walter, six touchdown passes, the sixth time in his career he's thrown for over 400 yards. Pac-10 love. I can't believe it. I'm giving a helmet sticker to Oregon's defense. I never Ducks? thought I never thought I'd give it to the Ducks defense. How about this? Ten sacks in the game, holding Stanford to minus eight yards rushing. An excellent effort by that defense. And Paul Peterson from Boston College threw for 383 yards in the victory over Notre Dame. 297 of those yards coming in Where's the second Where's a cane? Half. It's got to have a cane. I got to go Brock Berlin. This was a late addition to the helmet stickers. Brock Berlin with five touchdown passes for Miami. He, too, gets a helmet sticker. Just about to wrap up October now. One more week in this month before we hit that home stretch of November when you drive for conference championships. Magnificent Seven still sitting there. We'll see how they fare coming up. For Mark May and Trev Alberts, I'm Reese Davis. We'll see you next week.